Hello, everybody, and welcome to Empires of Arcadia. How are you doing today, Zizarin? You look so happy. I'm great. I slept for a change, so I'm very, oh. very energetic. Looking forward to some role playing and just chilling. Like a full six hours of sleep before this? Yeah, five hours. Wow, amazing! That's really nice. What about you, Mr. Trump? How are you doing today? Uh, doing well. I got a. I'm characteristically long sleep, I guess, of eight hours. Um, hope to do that more often. And yeah, everything's good. Go ahead. Wonderful. Wonderful. What about you, Mr. Destiny? How's that? I also am very well rested and ready to go. <clears throat> Last week was pretty exhausting. This week I'm doing better. Yeah, ready to kill some gargoyles, stone guardians, whatever. I don't remember what monsters we had exactly, but whatever we found in the tunnels. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, Mr. Devin Nash, how are you doing today? Well, <clears throat> one day at a time. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Industry's still a little rough. The waters are a little bit shaky, but we're making it through. You considering just quitting and leaving streaming behind and going into another industry altogether? One day when I, I will actually like go join an ashram and give up everything. I'm not brave enough to do it yet, but I will do it 100%. When I just disappear one day and I'm never here, that's what happened. Wait, what's an ashram? Mm. It's a little place where like monks go and there's no internet. Wouldn't you die? Of what? So they just <laughs> play everything on land? Uh, <laughs> no, we just play everything on land. <laughs> yeah, play Starcraft, remember, Starcraft Brood Wars all day. I just remember over the last week, Devin, that you've been broadcasting some really good stuff about recent events. So kudos to you. Wow, thank you. Actually, I saw you in my chat and I kind of was like, wow, like that's that's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, we're trying to cover, I'm trying to cover all the industry stuff that's going on at the same time as trying to fix it on the agency side. So it's just so much. It's just really overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bet. There's, it's been a week. Um, yep. Every well, day it's like something new. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like every time it's I wake up. down eventually, right? I, I hope so. I like, really do. Eventually, I we're just like I've been out saying of, that for like three months now. Yeah. But yeah. eventually, we're just going to run out of people. There's just, <laughs> this is not going to be any influence. Well, not even <laughs> people, but just like things that are. I still can't believe that like nothing has gone public about Doctor Disrespect. That's like unbelievable. And there are so many people that Twitch hasn't taken action against yet. That's also like super unbelievable. Yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's actually really crazy. It's uh, mm -hmm. Illuminati shit, dude. Well. <clears throat> When last we left the party, you guys were entering a tomb. Do we need to do any recapping before we... Not a tomb, a, a treasury. I, do we need to do any recapping recap, before actually. we get That'd here? That'd be nice. Mm -hmm. oh, all yeah. good. Mm -hmm. We were excavating the tunnels because we had just slain a... I believe it was a basilisk, something that turns you into stone. Mm -hmm. um, after killing him, we found rubble at the end. I think we spent several days here excavating all of the rubble. Um, I think we did it on our own. I don't think we used any goblin help. And now that we've mm -hmm. dug to the very end of the cave, um, we found a what appears to be some sort of treasury room. Mm -hmm. And Devin bravely charged, or Flint bravely charged forward into the room. And then two stone monster things seem to have confronted us as we made our way into the room. Yep, that seems to be about right. Um, let's see. So everyone should have semi limited version, vision. Those of you in the hallway probably won't be able to see what those in the main room are seeing. Uh, but it is a room with three columns on each side that will run all the way to the ceiling. A uh, slightly raised platform on each side with like a, a channel down the middle where you can walk. Empty uh, weapons and armor racks along the edges of the walls and then some gold and jewels and loot against the back. That and all of it looks like it's been, um, how do you say? maybe pushed through or scrambled through and there's no weapons left anywhere, which uh, seems to be a little bit surprising considering this has been definitely closed for thousands of years. Uh, but before you have too much time to investigate all that, I think we're just going to hop into combat unless anyone needs a greater recap. No? Wait, so I thought yeah. there was like <clears throat> treasure everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of gold and jewels and gems and statues and works of art. But like... <clears throat> the weapons and armor that clearly are supposed to live here on the racks on the sides are empty as if the racks had been um, pilfered. 
at some point, as if someone had taken all of the weapons before the tomb was finally sealed up for the last time, or the, the treasury was sealed up for the last time. Something. Something, something. Hmm. 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 <laughs> That's what we like to hear. Uh, so I think we should just start it. Yeah. We've rolled initiative last time. And I do believe Corin rolled second to the stone golems, who will act first. Time at destiny. You guys can all hear the combat music? Yeah. Yep. I'm not logged into the game. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's all right. Uh, I'll, I'll just have the golems kill you before your turn comes up. Do they all have right. breath attacks? Oh, uh, no one said that. No one didn't say that. These are both accurate statements. Yes. Okay, I end the game and I I can't see anything. I can see. I'm dumb. Okay. I need it's to stop good. talking before I know what I'm talking about. Hmm. All that- right. So the golems turn to face you as Flintheart enters the room with uh Zai right on his heels and the two statues begin to move. One of them stomps this way towards you thumping its feet on the stone floor below it, echoing like rock on rock. And the other one comes over here like this. And they will both start off with a slow spell. So Gollum on the left will slow. <clears throat> oh, uh, let's see. The Gollum targets one or more creatures it can see within 10 feet of it, which is just the two of you. Um, Each target must make a DC 17 wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, the target can't use reactions. Its speed is halved, and it can't make more than one attack on its turn. Oh. In addition, the target can take either an action or bonus action, but not both. These effects last for one minute. The target can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of the turns, ending the effect on a success. So, uh, would both of you make me two DC 17 wisdom saving throws? Hmm. Um, So, I failed a second one, I believe. Uh, Right, because you have your bonus for being a paladin. Wait, bonus for being a paladin? You're a paladin, right? You get the the saving throw bonus. Well, I get the saving throw bonus because of the aura. Right. The, yeah. the paladin oh, okay. Aura. I thought that there was something special about being a paladin that gets me no, to no, deal no, with no. this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I failed the first one. Excellent. <clears throat> you are both slowed. Uh, and that will be the monster's turn. Mm. It's our turn. So all four of us get to go? When the whole party gets to go. Make more than one attack on its turn. Does that mean one attack action or one total attack? Uh, one total attack. Okay. So, oh, at the end of its turn. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, All right. Well, that sucks. <laughs> well, Let's see. I want to move to here, and then I'm flanking, right? Uh, yes. Yes, you are. Okay. But I want to hear. Let's see. Where is my character sheet? I am going to become angry. Rawr! Um, I hit it twice with my Dwarven Great Eye. Bring the axe up and into the creature. The 16 is a miss, but the 18 will hit. 23, actually. 23. And is your max, your axe magical? Um, we never really discussed that. Like, it's because it special. sheds light, it sheds but it's light. not, it doesn't have a plus one to hit or a plus one to damage, right? It's just like a a really big fucking well-made axe that sheds light. Uh, so Flint, is this the one that Flint made? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Flint's people made. I don't know if Flint himself made it or not. Maybe you um, did. I, I, I think, uh, I don't think Flint would like, or I don't know if we like at Blue Steel would know like how to work with the, I don't know. Like how, it depends. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a, yeah, a magic weapon, it takes like a level 18 wizard to enchant. So Holy uh, shit. your fantastic blow against the side of this creature does literally zero damage to it. Your axe just chips off the side, sending a spark of sh- uh, a shower of Whoa. sparks all over the place, and the creature is totally immune to your non-magical attack. That's not good. Um, I don't know if I can ask this, 
but I'm assuming elven arrows would be assumed to be non-magical, right? Or would they be magical arrows? Because they're plus one to hit and plus one damage. That is a non-magical better craftsmanship bonus. Well, that's pretty unfortunate. Okay, what does it mean to hit a creature? If you hit a creature and do zero damage, does that still count as a hit? It depends on context. I'm um, literally the only one that can hit these. Okay, I would like to back up 10 feet. So <laughs> I have an attack called a goading attack. It's part of my oh, battle master set. And mm -hmm. basically what happens is that if I hit a creature, I can go to the target into attacking me and they have to make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, if he attacks anybody but me, he has disadvantage on the attack rolls um, against a target other than me until the next turn. So my question is if I know I hit it and I know I'm going to do zero damage, can I still goad it? I think goading attack requires you to do damage, but trip or drop item or whatever mm -hmm. it is, disarm, doesn't require damage. Because I think goading attack, you need to be like, you need to be threatening them in a way that they feel threatened by you to be goaded into the attack. Okay. In that case, are they holding weapons or do they just hit with their fists? They just hit with their fists. Understood. Um, sorry, go. What do you guys want to do? Go do stuff. Oh, wait. <laughs> Um, is it something when I rage, my attacks are magical? <clears throat> are they? I don't, I don't know. I'm going to look it up. That'd be awesome. All right. <laughs> I've thought about my action, and I am going to do this one. Uh, you see Zai noticeably moving slower than usual, of course, but he decides to pour on Step of the Wind. Uh, that's going to be my bonus action this turn, so I won't do it. You a... can take a bonus or a regular action, but not Correct. both. So I won't take a regular action. Okay. So I'm going to bonus action disengage. Since I'm moving at half rate, I move at half of 55, which is, we'll say, 25. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go there. No. Hopefully not triggering the other statues. All right. Well, uh, should you will... Oh, never mind. Take no opportunity attacks as you have disengaged. Yep. Uh, I take a quick moment to look around for obvious uh, tablet spellbooks. Um, let's see. There are two piles of gold and jewels in which that might be. Uh, give me a perception check to see if maybe it's sticking out at an angle that you can see it. Okay. Uh, perception. Mm -mm. No. No. Um, you're probably gonna have to dig around in each pile to see if you can find it. Okay, uh, so now I have another, um, I'm going to do my normal move action. So the, I'm... You already did your move. Oh, no, my disengage is a bonus action. Disengage does not come with movement. Disengage is simply the, I'm not going to take opportunity attacks. Oh, and your jump, no, your jump distance is doubled, yeah. So normally when you move twice, you're using your move to move, and then you're using your action to dash. And you cannot dash with your action because you took a disengage bonus action. Oh, I see. Isn't that the same as just taking my action to disengage, though? Yeah, I don't know why you took a bonus action to disengage. Oh, I see. I think I misunderstood. Well, then my yeah. action to disengage. Cool. That's fine. Um... <clears throat> Cord, Flintart. Um, I think Flintart has to attack the one above him or do something different. I'm waiting to see what he does. I I think the best course of action for me is to just attack since I can hit and uh, just pour damage in like mm -hmm. Radiant Strikes. So I'm going to do that. I, I, I have one attack this turn. Mm -hmm. um, so I will attack the one who I'm flanking for advantage. Perfect. Uh, 23. Is a great hit. And then... Um, I am going to use um, a level two spell slot to uh, knock that dude down. So that should be in a di uh, with a uh, with the um, divine strike thingy. Uh, let me whatever it's called, um, divine smite. So it should be two d eight plus one per spell level, so forty eight. In addition to the damage. Okay. Wait, or is it five d eight? Because this is three spell levels. Yeah, yeah, it's five d eight. So 2d8 plus 3d8 is 5d8. Okay, so yes. so this damage um, plus 5d8. So Starting at second level, you hit a creature with a melee attack. You expend one slot to deal radiant damage. 
The extra damage is 2d8 for first level, plus 1d8 for each beyond that. So you will be doing 3d8 from the Divine Smite, plus all of your weapon damage. Mm, it says 1d8 per spell level. Or am I reading Higher it wrong? Higher than first. To a maximum okay, so five. then it's 4d8, not, five, not, not 3d8. No, but it doesn't start at 2d8 for a first level spell Wait, slot. I'm dumb. I'm casting a level 2 spell. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yes, it does. You're right. So, so do you want me to okay. re-roll? How do you want me to do? Reroll the damage or what? Uh, we'll just take the first three. Okay. So we'll do the, the one, four, and the six, which is 11 plus your 19 brings us to 30. That's right. I think that math is right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you will rip into the stone golem with your flaming blade that will hit it and actually cut into the creature and the flames will blacken the outside of it. Uh, it is clearly not immune to fire damage. That's good. <clears throat> okay. That's a lot of HP. I have some saving throw at the end of my turn, by the way. Which yes. I oh, I, I will do that. the same. Um, and then seeing this guy, I'm going to go ahead and take, I might, I'm going to try taking one shot at this guy here. Mm -hmm. um, the guy on the right, I'm going to be using my uh, magical arrows. Mm, okay. I have 12 of. So Excellent. I think for damage, so I'm rolling that, and then it says 2d6 on the arrow, so I'm adding 2d6. Mm -hmm. um, and then a 1d8 for a Battlemaster die. Mm -hmm. Oh, Christ. This is the opposite Bad of luck. last week. Okay, so that is a total of 12 damage to the creature, which all goes through because your arrows are magical. Um, these arrows are unretrievable, right? Once they hit, they Correct. explode. They're okay. destroyed. I'm going to take a second shot then. And what, what? talk to me about your arrows. Remind us, the viewers, what they are. Um, so I was given, I think, I don't know if you call it a fletch or two fletches, but I was given some magical arrows by the Wizards of Riki that they had like in their old vault that they didn't have anything to do with. And basically these are magical fire arrows that create like, I guess, a small fiery explosion when you hit something that does 2d6 mm -hmm. damage. Yes, they will incinerate on uh, on impact, burning the target where their point hits, yeah. searing it for significant damage. Lovely. Um, on the next hit, so I rolled a 15, which would ordinarily be a miss. I'm going to throw a precision dice in here, uh, or die in here. So six is 21, which I believe is a hit. Yes. Um, rolling damage, it's going to be 14 plus 2d6. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's going to be 16 damage. Um, I Nice. I'm gonna broken. I can't do an action before. surge, and I'm gonna do two more attacks because holy shit! <sighs> okay, 14 is a miss. I'm gonna throw um, superiority die. Seven is 21. Is gonna be a hit. Mm -hmm. Rolling damage is 10 plus 2d6. Thank you. Ooh. It's 11, so 21 damage on that hit. And then one more, my final attack. 27 to hit. It's gonna be 12 damage. Plus the 2d6 from the explosive effect is 7, plus a 1d8 from a superiority dice, or die is 7. Okay, that's all my damage for that round. 14 so gonna... and 12 is 26. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and that's all four of those, plus my action surge and everything. Yeah. I Can you try to contribute a little more to the party, Destiny? That'd be great. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's all I got. Uh, Flintheart, will you make me a wisdom saving throw at the end of your turn? I did. I failed it. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, I'm also backing up a bit around the corner. Uh, the stone golems will go again. The one on the left rolls to recharge his ability, fails. The one on the right rolls to recharge his ability and succeeds. Um, so the one on the right is just going to slow again. Um, he'll slow a second time. So really, it's only going to be affecting you up here, Thorbjorn. Give me a DC 17 wisdom saving throw to avoid Easy. this. No problem. Uh, and the one on the left is just going to pound Flint Heart into the dirt. Uh, he will make his two attacks. Come here, buddy. And uh, he'll slam you twice. The first one is a 25 to hit for 23 damage. Cool. And the second is a 12. <laughs> So Consider me sufficiently pounded. I reduced his damage taken by 2d6. Whoa! Mm, Eight damage left. 15. So that puts me at 61, I think. Is that my... 15 should bring you to 63. Oh, a nice thing with roll 20 is if Wait, you what? hover over yeah. your character and you go into the green circle, if you just yeah. type in minus and then the damage it does, it'll automatically subtract it for you. you don't oh, no shit. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. fucking awesome. So like, wait, so we type minus... Well, it's 23 20. plus 8. 
Minus 23 plus 8. No, minus 15. So I'm now at negative 15 hit points. I think I'm in trouble. Uh, Maybe just minus 23 and then plus 15 uh, on separate rolls. No, wait, other way, not 15. (laughs) We're going to figure this out. Minus 15 okay. from your total is what it was. Yeah, there we go. All right. We're, we did it, guys. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Uh, this golem turns to face Thorbjorn. And that is the end of the golem's turn. Player characters. Awesome. So talk to me about like more actions that are smart that I don't normally do. Like, what do I have? Like, restrain, push? It's for your team to tell you. You can jujitsu the golem. Well, I, I'm thinking like maybe I can restrain <laughs> him somehow. You're it like doesn't do anything. It, I think it just you can either grapple or shove. Wait, yeah. what if you how does shove work as a mechanic? You might be able to shove him down and he's prone, but we already get advantage on the attacks, doesn't matter. Well, um isn't it that when you attack things, they everyone else takes half damage, so it would be useful if you got attacks on everyone, even if it doesn't do damage. True. True. Yeah, I can do that. So I can move well, here. Wait, I want to swing first before he moves. Yeah, that's fair. For advantage. So I'm going to go first. I'm going to attack um, the guy for 26. And, uh, Easy hit. I'm going to throw a level one spell slot at it for Divine Smite again. Um, putting me to three spells at level one. Uh, that would be 3d8 or 2d8. Yes. 3d8, 3D8 you're doing a level one 2 spell. spell slot? Level 1 spell slot. Uh, then it's just the 2d8. Alright, so we'll roll 2d8. Uh, 16. That was a nice roll. Good. Oh, oh wow. plus damage. Jesus. <clears throat> that was the highest I could have possibly rolled. That was good. So another 30 points of damage to the creature. I'll take it. Alright, and I'll go before uh, you. Oh, and I'll out. also sure. roll for my wisdom saving throw. Mm-hmm. Are the Which... phase dagger attacks magical or? No good. I yeah, fail again. They are plus one weapons, so they are magical. All right, I'm going to add advantage uh, attack this golem is behind. Is a 16 a hit? 16 does not hit. Okay, here's my second attack. 27 for... That'll 10. do it. 10 points of damage. You stab the dagger into the stone golem. It turns within the stone itself, producing a little bit of rubble that kind of comes out, and you can see cracks appearing from the toes to the head of this beast before you, this monstrosity, this construct. And uh, I I know the answer, but I'm going to ask anyways. Do I think there's a particularly vulnerable spot that will cause it to get stunned for a turn? Uh, well, it's made out of stone, so it definitely doesn't have any weak points. It's really just stone turned animate, so uh, no. there are no physical weak points on it. Uh, oh, but fortunately, I'm going to just use my flurry of blows anyways. So, I uh, didn't actually think this would come up, but my unarmed strikes count as magical, so I'm going to kick it magically. Excellent. Uh, let's see, where is that? Unarmed strike. It's a nine damage magical blow and 21 for 10 damage. Excellent. Your fists, how do? How does your fist hurt stone? Would you, they, they function as magical attacks, but give us some lore on how this works out. Zai, one by... punch man? No, I haven't. Yeah, there's that, Devin, do you have something? I've been in martial arts all my life. Yeah. When you, when you, um, so the monks of the ancient era, they punch gravel over and over again, hard gravel, until their fists become so strong that they can shatter stone and tree. It's literally years of Zai training, toughening up for this moment. And then he can channel his chi through his arms from the earth and strike, breaking stone. Well said. Well said. That's exactly right. Fantastic. Fan Tanister. Um, anyone else have an attack? We're still uh, on the same round as when I shot all my arrows, right? Or is this the next one? No, this is next the next round. This one. is round two. I'm gonna move down here and I will use one of my attacks to mm-hmm. um, just attack him, I guess. My thing there. 25 for zero damage. It is a hit. 22. Uh, it's zero damage, right? You don't do. 
It's a non-magical attack, right? Uh-huh. Yep, so zero damage. Okay, just making sure if there was, like, half my... Or it was just um, uh -huh. Sweet, that's fine. I just wanted to hit him anyway so that the bonus or my uh, ancestors attacked him. So your ancestral guardians, is that what these it's guys are? If he attacks anyone else to me, he gets disadvantaged. But I want to use my next attack. I want to shove him. I want to push him on the ground. Let's see. While you're raging, the first creature you hit with an attack on your turn becomes the target of the warriors, which hinder its attacks. Until the start of your next turn, that target has disadvantage on any attack rolls against you. The... Do -do 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 -do. Yes. So, uh, even though your attack did zero damage, your ancestral protectors are magical. Awesome. And so the creature will, the, the effect will go. Perfect. And I will mark the guy the, who is your ancestral warrior target with a green dot. Um, Corin. Wait, 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 wait. I said oh, I wanted no. to push Sash Shove as well. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. What did I do that? Just check? Uh, athletics check. And this versus... should be at advantage, so 26. Okay, versus their 11. Ah! Which one are you shoving? The only one. The, le the left one. This guy? And where you're trying to knock him prone? Yeah. All right. Easy peasy. You shove him prone. How do you do it? Mm. What is the the virtue by with you do this? I literally just walk up to him and just, like, fully push him. It's like, <laughs> You knock over the, like, 5,000-pound stone statue with just a shove? <laughs> Yeah. Yep. All right. It falls to the ground. Yep, yep, yep. Or I will, um, I'll slot an arrow and I'll just wait. I, I have eight of these left. I don't really want to, like, use all of these if we can come out of this fight relatively easily. So I'll just kind of chill. Right. It's going to take a turn if you don't kill it. You, I have eight more of these arrows left. We should probably like one get, shot away. We should probably just make it a co a concentrated effort to get you more magic arrows. Honestly, like that's like a thing we should have. These are I'm imagining these are ultra rare. Um, I mean I, I can take a shot of this now. Um, but unless Quai was going to special roll me, I'm pretty sure the shot's either at disadvantage or minus two or minus four to hit or something. This guy has no penalties to hit. This guy has penalties to hit. Oh, okay. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, because the guy is the this guy guy's is prone. almost dead. This is guy's still standing. standing. Yeah, usually when you're shooting at prone people as an archer, it's a disadvantage. Yeah, but this guy's right? not prone. prone. Oh, I thought he got shoved. The guy in the left. Oh, okay. Everything's um, on the left guy. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Sorry, I can't see some of the movement on my character. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, I guess I'll shoot at him. Okay, um, guy on the right, twenty-five to hit, fourteen damage, plus the two d six. Plus two d six is twenty damage. Um, are you allowed to show me? Before I use my final superiority die, I'm not showing you the. No, you got to do side beforehand. Oh, there you right, go. So yeah, use it. All right, you will kill the golem, and it will die. Uh, fall to the ground, crumble to bits, and just remain broken bits of statue on the ground. The other golem rolls to recharge, fails to recharge, gets back to his feet, and turns to face. Uh, uh, Thorbjorn, ha. and we'll attack him twice. The ha. first slam attack is a natural 20 against you. Oh, uh, oh, oh well. sorry, disadvantaged, buddy. Ooh, oh. Disadvantaged? Oh, uh, that's wait. the shittiest crit ever. Wait, why is it disadvantage? It's like not the spirits, right? No, if he uh, attacks someone other than Thorbjorn. Oh, I see, right? Yeah, so it'll crit that's you fine. for 28 damage, which you have down to. 14, and then it will slam you again. The 21 to hit for another 21, have down to 10 damage. So I take 24 uh, and damage. The Guardian will can pass its turn. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Players, you've taken down one of these. The other is still at full strength. All right, Zai, flank him. Let's get this done. Uh, Yeah, I'm going to go circle around to the other side of this goal. And did he stand mm -hmm. up? He did, he did stand up, yes. And I'm going to start unleashing my flurry of blows on it. I strike out with both blades. I strike out with two, uh, a punch and a kick. 21, uh, 24, 20, 21, all hits against the creature. Excellent. 8, 8, 8, 12, 11, and 6. Uh, 37 damage to the monster. The golem begins to crack Jesus. before you. 
Uh, I'll follow it up with my singular attack because uh, I'm telling you, there is a seed on this fucking program, and I'm in it. <laughs> Dwarves are naturally <laughs> slow creatures. <laughs> so there it is. It's the uh, it's the uh, twelve plus seven, and then uh, nineteen damage. I will are you roll doing more? my whiz. That's all I can do. That's my full <laughs> oh. action. Yep. Every day. Yep. <laughs> this yep. is my life. <laughs> Natural ones like it's my damn job, dude. I'm just has it been a minute yet? Like, not even, nope. huh? This is, is round ten. four. Yeah. Out of ten. Um uh, Quick question. How easy would it be for Zai to pass me one of the magic daggers? It would be an action for him to give you a dagger. Probably impossible because I'm spending my whole action using the daggers to attack. Yeah. It's not like I can attack him and throw you the weapon. Yeah. All right. Um, I mean, I guess I'll wait with pushing it prone until after Destiny's done. I think I'm done. Um, I'll chill. All right. I'm going to push. All right. Your athletic oh, check. Um, I'm going to glance Versus over at Flintheart's back, though, and notice that he has that magical spear. And I point out, hey. Bloodheart's got a magical spear. Oh. It strikes me a full time to give can it Can I, over. Since, <laughs> since, since the spear is on Flintar's back, can I grab it as my remaining action? Because I've only just one yeah. attack. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You get two attacks. You can grab the spear off him as a... I lad take the spear. Can I attack with my <laughs> remaining action, uh, with my remaining attack? No, I think it'll have to take your remaining attack to okay, grab the weapon off fine. of his back after you that's shove fine. it. Perfect. Oh my uh, god. Wait, you... slows don't make you fall slower, do they? No, no. Oh, fuck. That'd be some Looney Tune shit. Sorry, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The golem does not recharge its ability. It will continue its multi-attack slam on Thorbjorn. Hello? With a 16 is not going to hit you. And a 29, which will crush you for 16 damage. Huh. Real terrible damage we're getting here. You know, Spirit Shield, it says if you're raging, the creature you see within 30 feet of you takes damage. I, I'm i a creature. I'm a bit of an animal. Can I use it on myself? To take damage? No, to take less damage. It called, what's the ability <laughs> called? Storm Spirit? Spirit Shield. Spirit shield. Beginning at 6th level, the guardian spirits that aid, that aid you can provide supernatural protection to those you defend. Yeah, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> That's reaching. If you're raging and another creature you can see within 30 feet of damage, yeah. Uh, all right, player's turn. Right. The golem is weakening. It is breaking. It is cracking. How do I uh, how do I attack with this spear? It'll be the same. Does the spear have a um, an attack modifier? Is it like a plus one spear? Or is it just the teleport ability on it? I think it's just teleports. Mm -hmm. So then it'll be a regular attack. Um, so you can use your axe to roll the roll the hit, and then the damage roll is going to be a. Okay, I'm at advantage from this, like with between thigh. Mm -mm. No, you'd have to be standing where Flintart is or where Zaya is. To what get if it. I move here and Flintart moves down one tile? I've already taken my full action this turn. And ended my turn. turn. It's a new turn. Wait, we're on a new turn? Yeah, yeah. so if you move down yep. one tile, Doggers, then I get advantage. Doggers. But then this guy loses. Then doesn't. No, but he you, you move back up after. Yeah, yeah we're good. doing some weird initiative stuff. You can move back and forth. Yeah. Um, um, cool. I'm going to attack twice 15 and 16. Neither of them will hit. Well, I tried. Your spear right. thrust go hit the side of the creature and just reflect off doing nothing. I will attack. <laughs> 23 uh, will hit home, though. S bringing the creature in fire for 17 points of damage. This stone is blackened and sliced open, and the creature's arm has a large crack running down it, down it like a, like your... Uh, Wisdom! What the fuck is this called? <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God! It's time. Right, oh, the oh, there again. we go. Okay, we're back. Flurry <laughs> of activity, unleashing punches, kicks, 
and blades. Jesus. Let's the see. 22 and the 28 are hits. That's a lot of attacks. That's a good seed, baby. <laughs> 17. <laughs> 17 damage to the monster. Okay. The stone golem's turn goes. It slow recharges. And it'll cast it on you all. All three of you next to it have to I make a- I swear to God, DC dude. 17 wisdom saving throw. <sighs> pass, pass. I got a 30. And... That's a God That's a god saving throw. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> pass across the board. The golem is no match for our player characters. Go ahead and take your turn, guys. I'm gonna speed up really fast. I'm gonna attack two times. <laughs> happy i still only get one attack effectively but it's okay there the it 18 will hit for 16 damage mm. okay devin move down again real quick uh attack twice with the spear 21 27 what do i roll Both for damage good hits uh you're gonna roll what is a spear 1d6 plus one all right plus your strength modifier 1d6 plus your strength modifier Okay, so 1d6 plus 4. And how do I do the crit? Uh, 2d6 plus 4. Was that right? Ooh. It just didn't roll the second one, so just roll the 2d6 plus 4 separately. All right. 18 damage to the golem. Zai. Yeah, I'm just um, scrolling up and looking at that crit I had above. Uh, my mm -hmm. unarmed strike crit, it added one. It should be like one plus five, right? Mm -mm. It just adds the extra damage die, not an extra oh, modifier. All right. Um, so I do another flurry of blows. I think I might have missed. I hit once. I kick it for six. You kick the golem. Beautiful. All right. Uh, and you did hit it. Thorbjorn, so it is, your spirits are attracted to it, and it is now attracted back to you. The Stone Golems does not recharge his abilities, but he will try to slam you to death with two slams. 25 Ooh. to hit is 14 damage to you, Thorbjorn. And is there any reason he has advantage on this attack? No. No, don't even try it. <laughs> no. 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 Nope. Okay. That wasn't even worth considering. All right. Uh, players, actually, yeah, players turn. Corin, you've been watching the battle for a couple of rounds now, saving your ammunition. Is there anything that you want to be doing? I mean, I, I'm kind of watching. I've got like um, an arrow um, slotted, basically. Corin's just kind of watching them go back and forth, like looking if there's like an important opportunity where he needs to step in and do something. But I mean, otherwise, I have no magical attacks. I can't do anything. Um, I could move into the room and start investigating stuff, but I don't want to like trigger any other traps or whatever. I guess. Mm. Okay, so you're just gonna chill. It's fair, yeah, basically. Rest of the party. Uh, New turn. Yeah, I no. attack twice at advantage. Twenty-four, mm. twenty-five. So just two. Both hit. Two uh, d six plus eight total. Oh, then plus the two from your rage, right? That's still going. Oh yeah. Did we add that last time too? No, we didn't. Okay, so it, just so. for eight more damage then. Right, so minus eight and then minus 17. And it is getting low. The creature is barely standing. Blah, it's a blah. collection of loose bricks barely held together. You will hit twice, Flintheart. 17 is a hit, 18 oh, is, is a hit. Cool. Yeah. And you will lay it low. The stone golem crumbles before you and turns to broken bits of rock at your feet. The monsters are defeated. Cool. As this one crumbles, I was about to punch it, but then I whirl around and make eye contact. Well, I look at this thing. How close does this look like to that thing? Uh, identical. Oh. All right. Ready yourselves. I, I fear that the other ones might also awaken. Well, hold on a second. There might be a way that we cannot trigger them. Um, I look around for pressure plates. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, you take your time and start examining the floor. Why don't you give me an investigation check? Is this made? Of, is this room made of stone? Yes, everything in it. 
Except that's for the good. gold and shit. Um, can I do some, maybe some five head shit? And I want to like, I want to take the layout of the room. I want to think about how a stonemason would have made this room and where they were likely to put traps or pressure points or things as the room is designed. Hmm. Okay. Give me your stonemasonry proficiency check. Thank I think you. in this situation, oh, uh, it should be like a will, wisdom based. I don't know skill. if this will give him an advantage, but I'll also let him know. Hey, uh, I stepped all the way over here and I didn't trigger anything. So I would, so I don't know exactly. I think we were saying it's a history check with a double proficiency bonus. I could also do wisdom sure. if you like, but uh, yeah. Because yeah, I'm in part. Wisdom's higher, right? Because wisdom would be a, well, wait, wait. No, no, history would be higher. Yeah, yeah, okay. So it'd be history with a, it doesn't matter my my seed, but it'd be 16. 16, all right, yeah. Um, mm. yeah, there's nothing. You would expect pressure plates to be set right at the entrance. Because if it's gonna trigger a trap, you wanna do it before they have a chance to get in and steal everything. Um, and you know, you want, you know, if it's a treasure room, you want people to be able to go in and out. And so probably as few traps as possible, but like in prime locations. So if there is a trap, you've probably already triggered it, is your best guess. So, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so the, um, yeah. I'm gonna say, it might not be a physical trap because this uh, the outer side was magically imbued. Maybe once we touch this gold, the monsters will come to life. It reminds me of a children's story. Is that a I way that we could? Ah, what if we push the statue over and break it before it animates? That's a good idea. I was going to suggest we can surround it and then punch it while it's a rock. <laughs> I, I I think we could just push it over, but that's uh, don't need to punch it. But yes, that's a, that's a fine idea, lad. I, I don't think uh, pushing it over does much when it reanimates. Oh, if it's pushed over into many little bits, it falls and it oh, breaks. It's a stone smash- statue. Yeah. I, I don't know if... I mean, are these on attacking it? But by, by the way that the room is um, structured, it looks like these these are raised statues. Is that true? That they're they're raised on like a pedestal of some kind? No, they're, they're not they're raised on a pedestal. Level. Their feet are just standing on the the ground of these sides. Okay, but if you push one of these statues over, would it break? Well, uh, Thorbjorn knocked over this guy a couple of times, and he fell without taking any damage. But he was so animated, right? So Gollum's not going to take any damage from a fall, but like a regular stone statue should probably take significant damage from a fall. Yeah, because if I like bash over a statue in the Louvre before the security guards get me, like it's going to do some serious damage to that statue. Yeah, depending on the shape of it. You know, if it's got an arm outstretched or something that could easily break off, uh, depending on the way it hits, you know, there's a, a, a randomness factor to it, the amount of damage that could be caused. Okay. You going to do it? You going to go shove it over? Well... When I walked into the room, those two animated, right? Yeah. And then uh, Trump went all the way here. So that yellow line, yeah. And it didn't animate. What's this, Koibu? What's this? That's That's gold? gold. Yeah, it's gold and silver and brass and bronze. So would it be possible for me to like get behind this and push it forward? Uh, yeah. There's not a lot of space back there, but there's maybe four or five inches. You could, like, squeeze some of yourself and try and With, like, 18 strength and really give it a shove, like... Do you got, like, a a crowbar or something that you could use for leverage? Power shield. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do that. Why don't you give me a uh, raw strength check to leverage the dude out of the way? Okay. Um, strength check five. Nice. Uh, yeah, you definitely pry it off the wall, and the whole statue just comes toppling forward. And with a twenty-three, it will like shatter in the middle. Not like all the way through, but the the front of its arms break, and the head like pops off and rolls across the ground. All right. Well, nice. Nice. well one this- down, one to go. Yes, it's a little superstitious, um, but why don't you go get that one? I'm also going to walk, like, all the way around here, um, and then I say, um, Oi, monk, 
get on the other side and help me with the push. I'd like like a like a skill check advantage on the next one. Yeah, mm -hmm. got it. I'm gonna take the long way around also. I'm gonna be careful not to step on any oh. of the Yeah, I took the long way around. Um Thorbjord, meanwhile is just walking down the middle of the road. I was just trying <laughs> to get more um Good view shit. for the viewers so they can uh, see yeah, better. better. I'll just put my uh, character in the middle so they can see. We're gonna yeah, out of combat. I'll remove these things so you can see better. Awesome. We're gonna shove the uh, shield behind it, and I'll push yep. on on three with uh, with Zai. Yep, that gives you advantage on your say your check. Twenty four. Thank God you had advantage. The yeah. whole thing comes tumbling down and breaks upon the floor. Good shit. Um. Okay. Do you yeah. feel safe now? No, not with you. Never. I think, yeah. I think there's a the next one's a, a greater mimic or something. <laughs> the room wait, is a mimic. <laughs> wait, wait, you're right. There is this chest. You're right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I just never let my guard down with this guy. <laughs> the room is a mimic. <laughs> it eats you. You die. So I think then, that's fair when playing with Foybe. Probably good to start like investigating all the files and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very quickly, you will find the brass books that you're looking for. Uh, it's down over here in this big pile. It's just sort of buried at an angle, um, kind of left haphazardly. For an object of such great value that someone would lock away, it seems odd to be sort of just has haphazardly buried under treasure that is spewing about, but it's there. Strike. Okay, yeah. well, that's what we came here for, so I'm going to wait a second. Wait a second. Indiana Jones? Uh, when when uh, it was searched for, was it moved? or? No, I, I tell you the things the moment you notice them. Okay. This is very suspicious. Why would an item of such great value not be in a chest or something? Well, yeah. it's entirely possible the people that had it couldn't read. Seems like most of the people on this island can't, right? Maybe they didn't know how valuable it was. Also, remember what we did to get here? It's behind the city, behind a cave, behind a goblin, behind a basilisk, behind four statues, in a locked room. It's pretty oh, fucking yes. secure. <laughs> yeah. yes, at the same time, maybe the uh, last defense here is that it blows up, or maybe it's a fake. Uh, hard to say. But this looks like the type of thing where the thieves who managed to make it past all of that would celebrate and then put it in their bag and then leave while the wizards uh, or the defenders laughed as it was actually hidden away somewhere. Hmm. <clears throat> Can our um, dwarf still detect magical objects or do you not have that spell right now? Well... How long does it take you to change that out? You need a short rest or a long rest? One week. I don't. I don't. I don't have it. I don't have it. Sorry. It takes you a week. It takes you a long rest to change out your spells. Welcome to the Empires of Arcadia, <laughs> starring Koivu's rest rules. <laughs> and Koivu. Oh, I don't. I, personally, I don't understand why there would be any more traps or tricks past these two stone golems. I mean, I guess that could be, but that seems pretty exceptional to me. How many? Wait. How many pages do we find? One or two? It is one book. One Each book. of these spell books okay. is like, you know, bound of many uh, pages together. Sorry Were we supposed that. to find two books here or was it just one? I thought it was two. I thought mm -hmm. it was two as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were we supposed to find two in this room or just two like in the Southeast area, like near Necrot and everything? No, this was it. Uh, they said they had scribed two in a room with rubble. So this fits that description perfectly. You just haven't found the second one yet. Okay. Well. Zai, have you touched the book yet? No. Okay. I don't all know right. if we have any special preparations we can make at all, or do we just... Pick up one of the golem's hands and put it on the book. What? Pick up one of the golem's hands and put it on the book. Okay. Well, why? How then? Because if it melts the about. hand or some shit, we know it's not good. Yep. Uh, hopefully the hand is, uh, you know, not demolished enough. I'll I'll grab a hand and use the hand to kind of wiggle the book out. Yeah, you use the inert stone to move the book away from the inert coins, and you can brush it away from them. 
uh, moving it on the ground and separating it from everything else around it. Great. I'm going to lie my bag on the ground, and I'm going to push the book into the bag. Excellent. You slide it into the bag. With it comes a few coins, probably, that were near it, if that's okay. And um, you can take extra effort to avoid that if you want, but by default, it'll just be some coins nearby that slide in, into the bag. <clears throat> and, uh, yep, you can cinch up the bag, and there you go. Bob's your uncle. What? Bob? It's a turn of phrase, meaning that's just the way, that's how things are. How do you turn a familiar? phrase? <laughs> You're gonna die next to counter. <laughs> the room's a mimic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got the book. We gotta search around. Yeah, for the, for the other book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You find it. It's right over here, right next to one of the chests in the room. Okay. Uh, the chest is opened, and there's just a few coins in it. Looks like. At some point, it was opened and everything was just spilled out of it, and then it was just left there, sort of open and unhinged, or hinged, but like open and um, is there just awkwardly. Anything there. else that's cool in this room other than those books? There are some gems. There are some ornamental statues. There are some like fine worked pieces of uh, jewelry, like a nice silver uh, bracelets and necklaces, um, that sort of thing. But Does this look sorted in any way? Or perhaps previously sorted and then like earthquaked? Uh, maybe not earthquaked, but it does look like, like the room is set up for there to be places where everything should go, right? You've got weapon and armor racks everywhere and you've got chests and you've got piles of things and it's all sort of now just jumbled together. Uh, why, what, what are your theories on why the room is a jumbled mess and the weapon and armor racks are missing? anything in them well when the storms came and the mountains rose it probably shook up everything mm -hmm. the way i see it is uh maybe the storms coming and the mountains rising meant some sort of terrible calamity came so that the soldiers had to come in here and grab a bunch of weapons really fast and then mm. go fight whatever it was mm. yeah that sounds most likely no yeah. seems that and their haste, they just dumped everything on the ground with no regard for what it was and uh, never returned. Why the defense here, though? Well, it's probably their golems that they had here for defense anyway. They ran in, the golems ignored them because they're their golems. They took the weapons, they run out, and then the golems just stay there. They, didn't, they just didn't have time to come back and do anything with them. But I guess they should have animated the golems and been like, come with us, but maybe they don't do that. I don't know. A golem only does like one thing you tell it to do, like stay here and guard this door, and then you go back through it as a wizard and it kills you. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> it, it takes every command literally. So it could be stay here and guard this room from everyone but us, and then that's all it's going to do through its entire duration. Yep. Sounds like a good enough theory, I say, while I start shoveling coins into the bag. Yeah, it's you start like piling loot in. Mm -hmm. yeah. I help. I help side with that. I also like take a, a special. Like keep looking just in case there's like something that looks like a special or uh, like a ring with some sort of symbol on it or amulet with some sort of symbol or emblem on it. While doing this. Yeah. Why don't you make me um, another investigation check? See if you can pull anything that looks special out to you. Well, Thor we... Bjorn, you're not <laughs> known for your wise or intelligent ways, right? This Before is we... the nicest ring I've ever seen. Before we just put everything in there, I'll get a gauge. Does it look like uh, everything in this room might weigh under 500 pounds if I just put it in the back? Uh... I'll go around and, like, um, you know, weigh everything, you know, sift through it with my hands. No, there's definitely going to be more than that. Yeah. You, am I allowed to take a look through the piles to see if I see any jewelry or um, totally. necklaces or anything? Yeah. That look Give valuable. me an investigation check. Um, I actually still have inspiration from my Yaka, so I'm going to be inspired when I look mm -hmm. through this. Please. 17? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are some things in here that look like they are fantastic works. Um, in particular, you find a couple of things that look very elven to you. There is a series of silver, matched silver necklaces that have like very delicate leaf-shaped um, 
what do you call the dangly bit of a necklace that's not on the cord itself? I, I don't wear a lot of necklaces in my life, but the, the dangly bits of the necklace are all these little silver leaves with the tiniest little emeralds studding around the edges. Uh, they look definitely elven, not magical, maybe magical, you don't know, but certainly of elven make and probably something eh, that they would want back. Said not magical, but okay, I'll take them. <laughs> yeah. That's something that they would probably were... want to see. Uh, there yeah. is a set of them. There are four. Ooh, call me four chains. All right. Kid, four. Okay, Next on the topic bit. of weight here, uh, is it some particular objects weigh a lot, or is it just there are a lot of coins? Uh, so the books weigh a lot, and then the, like the statues are made out of stone. Some of them, some of them are made out of like solid metal. Um, all in all, you're probably looking at like a thousand pounds worth of stone and metal art objects, including the the spell books and the coins and Holy all the shit. other crap. That's a lot. Rich. Mm hmm Take the so we should probably start with the most expensive looking stuff. So gems, platinum, then gold, yep. and then if there's still yep. room. Yep. Yep. You can min max your uh, hoarding of treasure. Great. Uh, and I will just note shit ton of treasure. For the party. Party is hella rich. Dude, Koibu is actually five head, man. We get all this treasure throughout this campaign, but we're on an island that can't use it. <laughs> <laughs> for now. Alright, so I'm looking at my bag stuff here, and I'm deciding a safe amount would be we'll put in, uh, well, first of all, the books. They weigh how much each? 20 pounds? 20 pounds each. 20? Mm hmm. Okay. So I'll write down two uh, books, tablets, 20 pounds. Uh, and then we'll put in 350 pounds worth of treasure. Imagine if we okay. find a time machine and we can go back to before the time where the mountains rose and we could like mm. stop it from happening. Can I use my time machine to go back to a time when that comment couldn't find me? <laughs> what? I don't know, I'm just fucking saying dumb shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I want a hot tub time machine. Okay. Well, it looks like you have found the spell books that you came for here for, plus a whole bunch of loot. Oh, uh, defeated uh, the guardians and are ready uh, to go. Part. What's the purpose of this uh, side here? Is that a door? That is a limited type of map assets that it's actually supposed to continue outward, and I just needed a smaller room, so okay. I had to like modular change it okay. so that I would fit. Ah, uh, I think it would break the fourth wall. <laughs> no, it's, uh, we'll just call that the fourth wall. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can rest in here, right? Because this is a very resty place. We can literally rest anywhere. We've been resting this in this whole place for like a week now, right? We've been digging mm -hmm. from days, yeah. So yeah, can you can head back out. outside or whatever. Yeah. Why don't we just chill yeah, in here for a while? Rest with the goblins. Well, the reason why not to rest here is because we're in Goblin City. I mean, we can at least short rest here, right? We've literally been here for like a week almost, right? Oh, oh, short rest, yeah, sure. Yeah, not we're not staying here for a week. We should also discuss that gives us time to discuss our our goblin plan. What goblin plan do we need? We're gonna walk out of this place. Fucking carrying backpacks of treasure. You don't oh, think they're gonna be? No, we're not. We literally have it all in the bag of holding. We're just gonna walk out and see you. Yeah. yeah, we can even lie and say that we think there's something huge in there, and that we're gonna come back with better tools to explore it better. Oh, like we encountered like some terrible monster because they know it's bad cave, and then we said as a terrible monster, we're gonna go get some shit, come back, and then fight it. Yep. Then they we won't fuck with it. Really bad cave. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sounds like a plan. We should take a short rest here, then. All right. And while you take a short rest, why don't we take a short rest, and we'll be back in a few minutes on the other side of our break. Yeah, sounds good. let me nice. change scenes.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Empires of Arcadia. Our party has cleared the dungeon, stolen the loot, and take themselves a short rest while they plot their next plan. What is your next move? I think we should go back um, to the... What's the what's the place? Ricky. Yeah. Well, we could do that. Is there not... There's... This is obviously our next move. Every time we return a to story, uh, storybook or whatever to them, these tablets, we always get like very good True. rewards. True. Um, and then we can see what else they have to say. Or and then go to a crowd we... after. Oh, because they had like potions they could make for us, like falling potions. We have two books. And how many books were supposed to be here in two. this area? No, no, no. In this like. Oh, like where Nanakrata is? I don't know if we know about like the stone. We do. Part. He told us specifically. In fact, I, I took notes on it. Thank it's God. On the two, map. Two are buried in the ground. Those are the ones we just got. Yep. One nope. is Those in the two in Shelter Bay. Fuck. And then there's yeah. two in the ground near Nakrat and two in the giants. Two. So here's what I wrote. Two are buried in the ground. One is a mutant insect's no nest. One is a crystal cavern. Two are in a sky castle and two are around Shelter Bay in a treasury. Yes. The two we got are probably the treasury. Yes. Okay, so I'll put obtained there. So we, you're saying we want to make a trip back to uh, the land of the wizards, the Reiki? Mm -hmm. Ricky? Ricky? Dippy? <laughs> and then, okay, we want to go back to Dippy, and then we want to get, um, and then we go all the way back to, <laughs> to this place and get more books yep but won't that be a really long trip that's like relatively unnecessary my shit is glitching right now hold on it, it, on zoom does anybody else see two trumps right now on the call no no oh. i think he's so angry that he's making two of himself yes exactly. because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I see trump where it says trump and then devin nash is turning into trump too all i hear is travel time travel time travel time oh mm -hmm. oh, oh that's the joke oh very good very good did you uh, uh that's the, that's rolls. those years of debate training in there right? um <laughs> that's, that's so like... i actually i mean i totally see trump's point in this case however especially because the wizards the last time we were there talked about potions of slow falling and stuff like that just in case yeah, to go to the cloud city and shit yeah, exactly. So I think it is actually just for that reason alone worth going back. Not necessarily just because of the tablet shit, but getting the potions and then going up to the Cloud Giants. That makes sense. I'm down. We already have the potions. Huh? Yeah, we got four of them. Oh. Oh. Wait, real? I have a potion of spider climb. I'm guessing you're holding on to these? Uh, I thought we all took one potion of slow fall. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We all Did have one we? potion of slow fall. Uh, I have four potions. Rather. Okay, yeah, because I always add this shit to my sheet. I don't have okay. any of them. I have four so. potions of slow fall in the back. Okay. okay. Well. Um. Then is there a reason to go back? We always get really good items when we go back, and I'm assuming that we're clearing like some of the hardest content we're going to be clearing. So just. But we only like... want um. We only want water breathing amulets right so you have four total because we know we need those why the fuck do we need those i forget but i know um, we need them okay so we don't technically need them however we could explore no, we acropolis which is the underwater oh, yeah. city in the that'd Andy be Orc poggers yeah 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 so four would be really cool and then um we have two right now right i'm yeah. wearing one yeah okay um other reasons to go back is to get Destiny more magical arrows in case they're, they're not. They're not. They shouldn't have any more. Um, my understanding is when we went there initially, they basically like they don't. They don't. They're not. They don't have stuff like this. They don't care. They just had it like in a treasury or a vault somewhere. Like, oh, we have some shit like this. I guess you can take it. But my understanding is that we shouldn't expect to find more if we go back there. I'm up for going straight to Necro. I don't. I don't really mind. I. I, I would prefer going back so we get a. Big... One thing that like. Okay, here are some things to think about that make me think, okay? So, number one, what are these wizards going to be able to do once they have all these books? Like, I don't like the fact that we're doing literally everything for them before they join. Like, if they get all of these books, are these guys going to be able to, like, fucking tear off their chunk of the island and just fucking fly away in some sky forkers? Like, how powerful are we making these? That's one thing to consider, is that we're, like, supercharging sure. these dudes. Um, and then a second thing to consider is that, like, we have two different people that are after the same thing, we haven't mm -hmm. leveraged that at all. True. Because the elves also wanted this book. And we um, didn't really know about that until just now. So the last time we were back, we didn't know about that. 
That is definitely something we should go back and consider. Also, okay. Also. Nope, lost it. Oh, it's here. Okay. Um. Also. Well, we're we're pretty if, full too. Wait. Also, mm -hmm. yeah, that. But also, um, if we long rest, good. That's what I was about to say. Long yeah, rest, level good. Up. Long rest I, is going to be a level up for Zizarin. Oh, well, now Zizarin definitely wants to go back. He probably forgot. Is that true? I thought you already well, leveled up. I didn't forget. We can we can long rest at Ember's Keep. Wait, did you yeah. level up already? No, I I need a long rest. Yeah. Okay. So we can long I rest. Think at no Ember's matter Keep. what our plan is, we should start off with a long rest in Ember's Keep. So how about we start off with that? Roger that, That's boss. Good. Roger that, champ. And it's our city, too, so we can put our shit there, right? We could, yeah. I mean, it is for good. now, yeah. Yeah, why go all the way back to uh, Dippy when we can just go to... Well, the reason we're back to Riki is because we're going to get something in exchange for these two books. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think we have a really strong bargaining position now as well, so I agree. Mm. All right, let's head to Ember's Keep. We're going there no matter what. Let's go. Yeah. And we'll argue about this on the way. Okay. Uh, should I roll funny? Keep, Mr. Koibu. All right. So. Oh my God! Good. I swear to fucking God. Are you okay? Yeah. Wait, we, we haven't even left the cave or gone through the goblins or been when the winds rise and the mountains sink. You guys did like, take a short rest. You said you were gonna yeah. do, and oh, now you've headed that out. That means that means we need to wait. So we just we we you just can spend hit dice if you'd like. I yeah, I do want to do that. But also, we just like. Yeah weave it sounds like you guys just walk out without saying anything to the goblins you just like leave the cave and walk I mean, away you can say bye but they didn't seem like they gave much a fuck about anything so i don't think we care i much mean do, do any of them particularly approach us or sound, seem interested when you guys exit the the bad cave yeah they're all gathered around looking at you like what's going on as you exit um i look inside <laughs> Yeah, uh, you guys were right. That was a really bad cave. <laughs> okay, I got this. Um, I got this. Check this out. This is going to be Pog. Ready? Okay. I, I actually never get to use this skill, and I like, expect my character for it. So um, <clears throat> I want to like come up, and I'm going to be like, Oh, long have we toiled in the cave. Fought a great beast that turns creatures to stone. Oh. <gasps> yes, a vicious beast. Barely did oh. we escape with our lives, and now we have redubbed that cave. Not just the bad cave. Mm. It's now the very bad cave. Oh, no. Can I roll an intimidation check? Not to, like, just to scare him away from it. Yeah. Give me an intimidation check, Mr. Dwarf. Plus eight. <laughs> <laughs> the goblins are, they were already afraid of the cave, but now that you guys have come out all bloodied and wounded with like broken, uh, not broken, but like bruised faces and like bleeding on out of your shirts and everything, uh, exhausted, uh, they're a little terrified. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to be like, <laughs> if you've had your hides, don't be going in that cave. The very bad cave. We're gonna go outside and go get some more materials and then we'll go fight through the rest of it. Fight? Fight what? Fight the very bad cave. Does bad cave come out? No, it stays in there unless you bother, unless you bother it and make lots of noise. So stay quiet. Very quiet. Okay. Okay. We very quietly start to leave. <laughs> yep. You guys can head up and out and back into the jungles and uh, nice. make your way. I love it. I rolled the 13. I saw that. Can you roll me a D100? Yeah, I can do that. In fact, that is within Would my you ability. Please? Would you, darling? Please. It's a witch. Oh, that's how old I am. 54. <laughs> ah, no, yeah. Wonderful. Um... <clears throat> There is not an encounter worth your time. Actually, there are no even orcs in this part of the jungle, so it's fine. So you can go ahead and move yourself three hexes as needed through the jungle because you're moving quickly, right? Or are you moving slowly? We're moving what are we doing quickly. Here? Trump? Trump? Okay. Low as possible. Two, three. Lovely. One and... tile a week. <laughs> I figured, like, since we are doing this, I might as well, like, compromise and move quickly so that he doesn't actually go insane. So give me another three movement rolls, please. Oh, Somebody, no. anybody, 3d20? I got it. 
three, nine, and 20. Oh awesome. my God. All right, let's see what we've got. I'm just gonna roll these D100s myself over here. Uh, 78 is a shambling mound, which one to two shambling mounds, which is no trouble for you guys. We'll just skip it. And an 88. So after you make your way through the bamboo around the mountainside and are traveling on your way to Ember's Keep, you find yourself in the broken down trail of some large beast. You can see trees have been pushed to the side. Some of them have been flattened entirely. And there is a very large three-toed footprint in the ground before you, about four and a half feet across. It looks like a T-Rex footprint. This must be the swath of destruction left behind by a traveling Tyrannosaurus Rex. Great. Well, don't gawk on the footprint. Let's keep going to Ember's Keep. I have to say. Another day, matter-of-factly. So you're advising... We take no not... precautions and continue. Okay, excellent. You take no precautions and continue um, until the crashing roar of a T-Rex emanates from the forest to your side. Uh, it had one, the trail had gone away. You were headed in a different direction, but the T-Rex was still in the area, picked up the scent of these people and has come to chow down. Where is- Are our... you saying we smell? Uh, you most definitely smell. You smell like food, like meat and potatoes. I think we smell like death. It might be confusing the two. That's also a possibility. Um, they're not known for having very large brains. Not much is known about them. I think this is going to be a short battle, but it's possible a T-Rex could just kill you. Could one or two shot one of you guys. So, one, two, three. Who would like to roll initiative for the party? Me. Uh, let's bring you to our battle map and let's get everyone in the actual correct no, spot. No, me, smile. No, I did this. <clears throat> no, I made this, uh, smile. It is, <laughs> yes, it has turned around right around here-ish. And you guys are coming from up there. So Flintheart is probably on his elk. Just arrange everyone. Corrin usually chills in the back. So it's something like this. You're coming through the jungle. Let's bring you to a slightly more inland position. When the T-Rex is going to be bursting through this uh, foliage here, Funny. had like gone past, walked around these things, had moved on, and has turned back and is bursting out here. So somebody roll initiative. Well, the T-Rex rolls initiative. You did? 14. You? you did. 14. Very nice. The party will go first. Do it. Um, this looks like every T-Rex we've seen ever, right? There's nothing special about him? Nothing special about this guy. I think I made him too big. <laughs> right, nothing I special. Just a step big for it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take... Uh, I'll blow my action surge and do four shots. So one, two, three, four. Um, 18 is the lowest. 17 is the lowest. Do all four hit? Yep. 13 AC. Okay. Roll it all. One, two, three, four. I'm sorry. Those all were the good ones. But, and then right. I'll add 48 damage for my superiority dice. So 13 Ooh, to 13 is. Work. All right, um, so we do minus 13, minus nine, minus 14, minus, minus seven, seven minus and minus seven. 13. There we go. Okay, it's all my You attacks. pump four arrows into the T-Rex who howls in rage and pain as the arrows flutter over his chest and face. Okay. I risk pace, I do a running at it and I Unleash a flurry of blows as I get there. Actually, I full cheat other than that. Wait, don't you want like to flank it and shit? I can't make it around. Okay. So they, wait, 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 20. wait, 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 before, uh. You already rolled damage and shit. I know. I was going to give you advantage. It's just I can't get there in time, but I haven't given back the blink spare. Uh, interesting. Well, uh, the interesting thing is I might get advantage on the next rolls because the first one I'm throwing a stunning strike. So 12. And then stunning strike. 12 and the T Rex 
makes a con save and fails and is stunned and you guys just destroy it. Yeah. All right, here's the three other damage rolls. <laughs> yeah. I 17 minus 14 <clears throat> and you guys are going to get a full extra round. Yeah, the T-Rex isn't even a challenge for you guys unless it wins initiative somehow. I rolled my attacks. Wait, why Flint do we get a full does... extra round? Because he stunned it with stunning strike. Oh yeah, got gotcha. Because Koibu yeah. hates this mechanic. I go here <laughs> and then I. You do thirty-three to it. <laughs> I throw my blink spear at the T-Rex. Throw the blink spear. <laughs> you hit it. All right, so the T-Rex so... doesn't even get around. It just dies. Okay. I'm so Wait, sorry. I give back the blink spear to Thor. Oh, Thank you. It's fine. This is that late game. The continent is no longer even a threat to you guys. Dude, it's. It, I love Content. it, dude. It's great. It feels like playing PoE. It's actually perfect for me. Yeah. <laughs> He's just mappy to this point. I am literally going around mapping. <laughs> All right. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. uh, one, two here. And then one more D20 for the last day. Moving through the swamp just to get to Ember's Keep without any problems. I'm doing it. It's me. Yeah. All right. You guys can make it back to Ember's Keep. One of the few real towns on this continent. I can't you count. Arrive. Can I start leveling up? Yeah, you can go ahead and start doing your stuff. Awesome. You want to roll me some hit points, buddy? What, do I just click my hit die? Yeah, you can just click the hit die. Five. Ooh. Unlucky. Roll. Wait, did you take? Did he take the average, or did he take no, the? No, he rolled like a hero. Well, uh, we you have a lot of hit points. You don't need any more. If we got enough XP, I think I might make nine. I'm gonna start leveling up to nine. Okay. So wait, what? How much XP, XP did we get? Um, I, stone as long golem. as it's uh, in the ballpark of a little over a thousand, I made it. Wait, how is that possible? Wasn't I one to one with your XP? I, well, I mean, he a character. just realized. Zai's an OG character. He's never OG. died. I just realized, Koibu, I can't just click my hit die. Because I'm doing We're a not. fighter level up. I'm not, I don't get a d12. Oh, you're right. You get a d10. Luckily, the two that you rolled is still within the bounds of a d10, so we don't have to re-roll it. Okay, that's lucky. I was worried so for lucky. a second there. <laughs> uh, um, so I believe for experience, we were just we're doing the golems, the basilisk, the T-Rex. And the right. RP and the goblins and the and RP the... and the goblins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just for monsters, I'm trying to refresh my memory. Uh, T Rex. Um... Wasn't there face spiders? Oh wait, we fought four. I'm. I remember this. Four um, what? We fought Fa four face spiders. We I don't remember why, but I know we did because I remember yeah. we tried to get their silk sacks or whatever. Oh, yeah, right. and two shambling yes. mounds. Yeah, it was six of them. Oh yeah, and the two shambling mounds as well. Oh, six face spiders and two shambling mounds. Perfect. Because I tried right, to carry right. that. Um, Ziz off into the forest or whatever, right? And do you remember right. that arc witch we fought and the one that and we beat? That one too? Uh, I don't remember that one. Yeah, yeah. He was like level 20 and we just got a couple good rounds on him and it was that um, was it. Are you able he, to he, add action stars to my sheet? Yeah. And he had that Baba the Yaga's hut. <laughs> <laughs> what else do I get? <laughs> I think it's pretty much only action surge I get by leveling up, right? <laughs> uh, the D10 and the action surge, and that's probably it. Uh, maybe your proficiency bonus goes up? I don't know. I'll check. I don't know. I'm level... So we get experience for Eight. monsters. Um, then we're going to get experience for fun times with the goblins. Mm -hmm. um, and what else did we do? We discovered Shelter Bay, which is worth some tidy XP right there. Got two books. Negotiated with some goblins. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll divide it between four players. So everyone should be taking home uh, 7,500. Holy guacamole, dude. Wait, really? 7,500? 7,500. Okay, holy shit. Feel like a legendary Koibu campaign person. Um, is it true, Koibu, that I only have thirty four thousand six hundred and forty five experience? Well, I just hit forty thousand forty one thousand two hundred and sixty five, and you should have slightly more than me. 
is, did you already add the 7,500? No, 30. No, I haven't yet. So it'd be 42,145. That's right. Is it? Yeah. So that means if we get one more 7K session, we're actually level nine. Yeah, you should be 42,145. Uh, yep. Paladins don't. I basically like never get anything again on this character, so I'm good. I'm pretty sure. Uh, um, I've I decided up. I was going all monk, so I hit level nine. Yay. Woo. Oh, actually, I get third level spells next level, but those don't do fuck all. It's not oh, like please. it's not like getting third level spells on a wizard where then you just run the game. I get. What is your... Sorry, God. I was just bitching. Never mind. Oh wait, <laughs> we get uh, revivify. I wonder how that works in Koibu's world. I think the gods revivify? just. Why? That's What's a res. Revivify? It's a fucking res. It's a f res? Well, it's, there's no resurrection, so... Well, no, it, that's not what you said to me. In Gnomes, Tomes, and Catacombs, I believe I in say? episode 7, section 14, you said, you, you said that resurrection has never been tried. You didn't say there is no resurrection. You, it, so we don't right. know what would happen if someone cast it. Right. If you ask me, I'm coming back as a troglodyte. I fucking know it. You touch a creature that has died within the last minute. That creature returns to life with one hit point. The spell can't return to life a creature that has died of old age, nor can restore any missing body parts. Love it. So, if I cast that, no one knows what happens, right? Why don't we worry about that once we get there? Okay, so, okay, but anyway. If we that, get there, what do you mean finishing once? Finishing my, my bitching, literally the spells I get at third level, I can drink water. <laughs> I can also create the daylight. <laughs> wow. <laughs> pretty fucking legit, dude. Yo, I'm level eight. I'm pretty A level eight. nine paladin. I create fucking a light bulb. Yes. <laughs> hey, that took Edison a while, okay? <laughs> uh, Flintheart is eight. Zai is nine. And you took the average hit dice, right? That's right. We'll take the average, a result of five. Right. Five plus two uh, for your con. I added two, uh, seven max HP. Also, yes. I can now run on water and run up walls. Run up water and run on walls? Tell me about this. Well, you see, I move so fast now that I'm able to just run along liquids and also run up cliffs. That's He's pretty Jesus. straightforward. You, you know that I already moved 55 feet around, so the next Jesus level, was I... a third level cleric, dude. <laughs> uh, a ninth level monk, you mean? He multi-classed. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds so like he was like oh. paladin and a monk. Um, for my HP, I roll, is it just 1d10? Plus... Yes, you're just doing fighter? Yep. Yep, one d10, d10 plus, plus con. Yeah. Oh uh, my god. Wait, what? didn't Jesus, when he that he resurrected in the Bible, have to wait a week? So this is like real life is quite his world because he like he resurrected and then he had to wait wait a week to recharge his spell slots. Three days, right? Oh shit. Ash wow. Wednesday to Good Ugh. Friday or no, Good Friday to Easter Sunday. Fuck I like don't that. know. Ooh, not great on the HP today. Oh, he rolled, I see. How foolish. Well, I'm pretty <laughs> sure I'm way above the average on my HP, so I'm okay rolling for now. Mm -hmm. Lock in those gains, man. <laughs> um, okay. Looks like character sheets are all updated. Our level nine characters also have a proficiency bonus of four. So all Ooh. of your things that you're proficient in, your skills, your saving throws, and your weapon attacks will all go up by one making you even slightly more broken. Um, but I think all the leveling up is done, and here you guys are in, uh, what is this place called? Ember's Keep. Okay, uh, during the long rest, I idly chat with the group. Do you think we could form an alliance with the giants? And then I dig through my brain about the tales about giants are they inherently evil. Can you work with them? Giants are typically depicted as evil, but knowing how wise and what we say, um, sentient, 
not what is, uh, what, what do you call it? empathetic that Zai is. You might realize that the depictions of giants as evil are typically because when people are in conflict with them and have never had peace with them. And so they're blanketly described as evil. That doesn't necessarily mean they are, you know, they're, they're larger creatures who don't give a shit about you and will tromp on you if you get in your way. But maybe if you could give them something they wanted, maybe if there was some, maybe if you had something that an offer could be made, there might be something there. Maybe not. Maybe they would just want to stomp all your guts out and kill you. Or maybe no one has ever had anything that the giants have ever considered worthy of their attention to even bother having a conversation about. You know, they're just so much bigger than everything else. They usually just don't give a shit about you small people. Um, you don't even register on their radar. But maybe, maybe now that you guys are nine, eighth and ninth level warriors here, who have lots of magical items at their disposal, huge amounts of wealth, access to the entire island, allies all around. Maybe, maybe you have something these giants might want. I feel like there's got to, um, just from like a diplomatic point of view, I, I don't know if Korn would think of this because it's not in his purview to care about this stuff, but like the fact that we have, we're building up so many different races, like that's, different people should have vying interests for that, right? Like these giants should be threatened if they know the Reiki wizards are being built up, or maybe even the elves might be. Um, I feel like that's something that we should think about. Yeah. I agree. I'm surprised there hasn't been more people coming to that we've been hearing from, like coming to us asking for things. Yeah, I mean, okay. we just went to them first. Otherwise, they probably would have. Mm -hmm. The people of Uma came to you first, oh. and then the people of Ember's Keep, when you showed up, were like, "We definitely need this thing." But other than that, everyone else has been sort of, you know, passive as you have a, what is the term, um, approach them and serenaded them? That's not the right term. Attempted to seduce them. What's the non-sexual way of saying seduced? Um, persuaded? Persuaded, yeah. There's a more colorful word that I can't think of right now. Courted. Courted them. Mm. Okay, well... We can talk about our plans on these giants. So we can do the just straight up brawl tactic, walk up to their doorstep and fight them. We can try to sneak in and just take it. That might be easy. And we can try to negotiate with them, which will probably turn into brawling. You know what? Why don't we just try not to kill something for once? Wait, what? <gasps> Like the we murder just go up to homo them is me. And we'd be like, hey, what's up? Um, to set the scene, you guys are talking in the comfort of Ember's Keep, deep within the confines of its nice stone walls. Uh, there's a small fire going because down here, this deep into the stone, it's just sort of cool and chill. You know, the rock itself uh, keeps a lot of the heat out and maintains the cool temperature. Um, you're also probably, I don't know, maybe 30 feet underground at the, the inner sanctum of Ember's Keep where you are given rest and shelter. Just to give a little mood lighting to, the, to this discussion. The people of Ember's Keep, Grafes, Siphon, and Jaren are here. And uh, they're around if you need them, but they've probably given you some space. Some servants will bring you food and water uh, so you can rest. I believe you probably told people generally what you're doing in this area. Maybe not the specifics we're here getting these books for the Wizards of Reiki, but we're heading south and we visited this thing. We explored a, an ancient city or whatever. Um, all right, please continue. I just wanted to give some mood lighting to what's going on. I like it. Yeah, I like when you do that. That was cool. Thank I you. did it. For, I did it for me. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well then, uh, I too would like to avoid fighting as a priority, so that leaves us with two main options: the stealthy way or the negotiating way? What do you all feel like? I think we could try to talk to them, and then, you know, if it doesn't work, we can just push them off their clouds and kill them anyway. Like, it doesn't... I'm not worried about... I don't think we need a huge advantage over some cloud giants. They don't sound like they're going to be that dangerous to fight the Dewey in the mid. Mm, yes, and we... Remember, we did learn that they float off, so... 
What do we have that cloud giants want? Do they need food from us? Do they need anything? Like, what could we possibly offer them? Oh, they, they probably like living. But I suppose that's not a good way to make friends, eh? Right. Aye. Well, well I mean, then. we know that one of the giants had this group of goblins working for him. Uh, too bad we didn't figure out what they were doing, but I... We spent a week around the goblins. Is there uh, any indication of what the goblins are doing for the giant? They said that the giant comes and they pay him tribute. Okay. Um, but goblin tribute is questionable. You know, the hell could a goblin give a giant? Uh, do we have any idea what giants like? No. You said they drink rain. Don't you all drink rain? <laughs> I drink the blood Holy of my enemy. Shit. <laughs> Holy fuck, you're... I'm fucking Krangle. That's insane. You're right. All water okay. is rain. I'm sorry. We need to take one break. What? what the fuck is Krangled? Why have I heard you say this <laughs> word like 30 times today? I've never heard this word before. Does it just mean this is like fucked up? It's messed up? It's... <laughs> There's <are> in... <laughs> I don't it even... It's a POE thing. Okay, was... all right. Yeah. It, but it means... It, it means... Okay. It, okay. So originally in POE, if you curse an item, okay, it's fucked. All right? Like you, you can... Or if you corrupt an item, you can't uncorrupt it it's just the way that poe works but okay. if you if you bless if you bless that, that means it's crangled so it's like it's cursed it can't be modified it's messed up beyond all recognition it's fucked and then and then if you uncrangle something it's uncursed but you can't uncrangle it okay crangle means absolutely fucked up beyond all recognition basically gotcha okay sorry yeah <laughs> but yes that i that quote just blew my mind i can't believe that everything wait so all water is rain it's all part of the hydrological cycle. Like, it evaporates and then it rains down again, and then it evaporates and it rains down. I'm sure the water, even in Challenger's Deep, eventually makes its way to the surface to evaporate and rain down again. Wait, Wait how do we not lose any? Wait, Wait I can't even tell if you're being serious space. right now. We have gravity. The only way that humans can drink water is because, like, the reason why river water is drinkable is because it evaporates, so all the like impurities are gone, and then it rains down because it's just water, right? And then it goes to the rivers, and we can drink it safely there before it becomes salty or whatever in the ocean. Wait, is this happening? In real this is life? This out-of-game conversation. No, no, I mean, like, is this, like, news to Devin? I'm... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shocked. My job is... I'm an industry guy, dude. Like, I do marketing. I don't understand how the fucking clouds work, okay? Fuck off. <laughs> 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 All right, that's, that's not my wheelhouse. I'll get paid to eat rain. I'm just going to call my happy little <laughs> cloud from now on. That's amazing. <laughs> that's fucking crazy, dude. Holy shit. Okay, okay so... Okay, what are we planning on doing? Yeah. <laughs> um, We're going to go talk to him. And, but we have some... We, that's what I was asking. Cloud giants, what are they like? That's how we started this. <laughs> I don't think anyone has any idea. Why don't you theorize? What might a cloud giant want? Power. Well, it seems like since the goblins are paying the cloud giants uh, tribute, they like tribute, whatever that is. You think they'd like some of the gold we just got? Maybe. We have no use like for kind it. Kind of already in their possession, like they must. No, have... no, no, because no goblin could go into that. They, they probably didn't even know it was there. Yeah, we know that the goblins probably don't have treasure. Because so, a giant I mean, has never been in that city, because that city is too big for a giant to be yeah. in. Number and and no goblins ever returned from that place alive. So that yeah. I'm sure they have no idea that there's treasure there. So I think we can deduce that the only thing the goblins could possibly tribute to the giants is like food and rocks. Yeah, but the giants rocks. probably don't like rocks because that would be dumb. So they they probably just want food. What? I mean, you ever, there's like humans that like rocks. They're human intelligence, right? There's like humans that collect rocks. Maybe they like rocks. I liked rocks when I was a kid. I liked crystals. <laughs> Me too, actually. And to an ant, I'd be like a cloud giant. They're living on like a mountain area. It's like they have all the rocks they need. Do they have shiny rocks? Are you sure? <laughs> I think we should bring them some shiny rocks we, oh, and some gold and some food. What, what How about this? Food? Oh my god, wait a second. <clears throat> Holy shit. We've got to go back to the wizards at Riki. They should know more than literally anybody yeah. else on this island about anything. We can just ask them when we drop the yeah, books let's off. Let's just go back. Oh, true. But they have a library. And I want to fight something now with my action search. I can be like destiny like this, except melee range. Okay, so 
I understand that you guys make fun of me each time for this. I'm oh going God. to. Here we go. Here we go. But this time, what you are actually saying mm -hmm. is actually insane. I think this time I'll get the crowd behind me. So this is 150 miles. Uh, let's see if I put that into days of travel. I'm but an three, old man. Yes. I don't like walking places. Huh? I'm okay with fast long. traveling. <laughs> oh, I'm back in my day. Is like a ten days travel back and forth. We had yeah, to walk fifteen that. miles uphill both ways. Ah, I'm okay with traveling jungle, fast. Because now, <laughs> now we are at the point where we're actually really powerful. We're like creaming encounters now. Yeah. I mean, we're not, we're literally, we're literally not what even doing verb? encounters right now, right? We're skipping them. So, like, we can get over there in, like, at least in a real lifetime, like, five minutes, right? Like, it's like, maybe. So, you know what, Koibu, we need to unlock fast travel. What's going on here? In game, it is one month of travel, give or take. We wait, could also wait. stop by the elves, too, and I can I have an, I, make me more I powerful well. have a good idea, which is really yeah. rare for me. Aren't we building roads? And we get like a like we can start getting like caravans of like and fast traveling across jungle. Isn't that like a big thing about this campaign? It's like guys, we building... already fast travel. He's not even having us do encounters. <laughs> I, 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 because we because because Trump's whole concern is time, right? So so it's less time if we get in like a carriage and we horse back over the jungle. How are our roads going? We're building those. Yeah, only between Ayu and Yaka and no, we're building roads everywhere. Uh, maybe just what? between Ayu and Yaka. It's the only place we've talked about it. Fuck. Well, that makes sense since we, you know, we're not allied with Riki yet, but eventually we'll get that done. Colonize the island. We'll work we, uh, on it, but for we, now, let's just fast travel back to Riki. Bastion thing, like they run out of fertilizer Manifest in a few months. Manifest your destiny. Do you know, instead of arguing about it, we could have just fast traveled back to Riki and we'd be there now. Yep. Also, we could pass the yak and get inspiration again. Wow. Yeah. And since we all feel ultra fucking powerful, maybe we're even strong enough for the sideways dungeon. Maybe. No! I am actually <laughs> done for that now, now that I'm level eight. No, wait. Uh, get me level nine and I can cast a spell that makes undead really bad. Anybody have the, oh, I'm on mushrooms. I'm looping. Remember when Devin literally just said, oh, now I get nothing good for leveling up anymore. I remember like, that. Now all of a sudden leveling up is really important. I Only remember. in this specific instance. I'm my vote is wherever whatever Trump wants to do. Okay, okay, I'll do whatever. <laughs> Acquiescing. I don't care. Wait, really? Okay. Wait, but I just want you to. So, it, from I a logic point of view, if we use logic and reason, the, the gifts endowed to us by the gods as humans, right? We go to Riki, we get free shit, we do research about the golems, and we come back. There's literally no downside to this. Or yeah. we could rush in here with two books on us for no reason, with your bag full of gold, by the way. That, so if we encounter any more riches or treasure, um, I guess we could drop it off here at Ember's Cape. Like, there's just no reason not to just get shit. All right, I vote going to Riki. I. Yeah, I, right yeah. Now, we're playing League of Legends, and we have like 4K gold in the jungle. And instead of going Destiny, back, what's your vote? <laughs> I mean, I would Wait, vote. But we can literally back. deposit into. Empress. Okay, it's three versus one. We're going to Rocky. Koibu, what's your vote? I have no say in the matter. Okay, it's three versus one. Trump, you lose. Enjoy okay, your okay. enjoy the that, trip. But at fun. least we agreed I, to fast travel. Yeah, I'm willing to say that I lose, but I just want I want to I want Chat's opinion on how <laughs> Chat? you want to run a fucking poll. This is not mob justice. <laughs> then, like, I this is Twitter. Like, they're mm. talking about one month of in-game travel. To like go there and then like turn two books into stuff and then like you probably come back to the same exact spot. Yep. Except with more magical items. Yeah. Yeah, with like two books. And books maybe and that. potentially knowledge that would help us like do go cool shit with the golems. Yeah. Like we're literally at the place that we want to get the books right now. And instead you want to go to the other side of the island, deposit two books of the six that are right here, and then come back here for the other four books. I was like, am I? Am I the only sane one here? Wait, real nope. quick, Trump. What do we lose again for that month of time? What happens? It's bad. There we go. All right, we're going back to Riki. Go, go, go. <laughs> so here's a, to in, in real life argument, should should we just like, should we just AFK for a month? 
we already agreed that we're not playing this game based on like purely RP reasons. That, that well, I got also, I got shut down on that last year. It's not like in real life we wouldn't do this because I'm gonna like lose subscribers if I leave my stream for a month or I'm gonna fall <laughs> behind in life. It's not like we're missing out on our opportunity to study for a PhD or there's some big technological advancement. Like yeah, dude, this life is our back life. In the day, yeah, this is boring. These guys do nothing. You probably run around, probably hunt a little bit, just jerk off doing random shit. Like it's not like there's all this great shit that we should be doing that we're missing out on. We live in a shitty fucking island with no goddamn internet or cell phones. Like the games here probably suck. Like, what else are we going to be doing? The game suck. Let's play stick in a cup again. There yeah. we go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is our life. We we walk around. That's what we do. We walk and around And we literally like know nothing about yeah. Cloud Giants. Let's roast or grill the... Not roast. Grill the fuck out of the... Or maybe we can roast them, too. We can grill the fuck out of the Riku Wizards and get some information about it. E. Destiny Big Brain. 3v1. What's the chat say? Chat Let's say this is right. <laughs> 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 yeah, weird. We're on, we're on twitch.tv slash zizzer. <laughs> awesome. I'm going to okay. roll us a d20 to start moving. Roll us 11 d20. Roll 1d100 to see if Trump okay, descends into madness. Okay, I'll roll a 10 d20 then. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the first one's a six. I see, yes. Oh, oh my. Wow. Three, four. I'm going to interrupt real fast. So I think the path you took was the short way to Ricky, but it sounded like we might want to pass by Yaka. Oh, we want to go by Yaka? OK. So we'll go to Yaka. We'll drop off all the loot. We'll get inspiration, then we'll go to Ricky. OK, so we're going to need another 2d20, actually. We also, two days. actually, oh. while we're stopping for <laughs> Yaka, um, Yaka should have like this should be like a fucking like an acropolis. Is that the correct word of knowledge? There that should be like a... not the right word, but continue. Um a bastion of knowledge? Like like some point where like all sorts of people of like different types of people come together and like share knowledge and information or whatever. Maybe a metropolis? I don't know. But like there should be like a lot of different people moving in and out of here now. Maybe we could ask them if any of them have experience with cloud giants or anything like that. A mecha of knowledge, baby. There we go. That's a good one. Mecha of knowledge. Space fighters are born. One of the people in Cloud Keep or whatever, Ember's Keep, wouldn't they have known about giants before since they live pretty close to them? Uh, they might know a few things about giants if you want to ask them here. Before we leave? Before I, you leave or after you come back. I mean, you got to pass through Ember's Keep to get here anyway, right? I think what yeah. Koibu's just going to do now is just put every encounter together. So he's going to be like, okay, you encounter two Thrallaroos, three T-Rexes, 37 face spiders. Literally so, the same mob. It's every encounter I mean, we could together. There's one creature. <laughs> all of that at once. We could literally walk into a forest and fucking... Smokey the Bear destroy everything. If we wanted to. <laughs> Don't think so. Action Some of your upcoming challenges may test that. But Action economy yet. matters a lot. Well, m mainly uh, the reason we're doing so well is because we're fighting. Oh, one remember thing to have uh, updated everything on your sheets. I actually need to finish my sheet. With, I mean, uh, keep in mind too, our action economy as a team is pretty insane right now. Um, like between me and Ziz, we have eight attacks in one round. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Yeah, yeah once per day. Yeah, but Koibu, yeah. okay. You know that thing? Would you rather fight fight one duck-sized horse or a hundred horse-sized ducks? <laughs> the problem is, if you fight a hundred duck-sized horses, <laughs> it's way harder <laughs> because there's so many of them. <laughs> so I'd rather fight, fight one horse-sized duck. <laughs> you, you know. Hello? Oh, I get it. <laughs> yeah. Am I muted? <laughs> totally Not right yet. Muted. Yeah. All right. You guys pass by goblins who flee from you, orcs who flee from you, a, a giant constrictor snake. Uh, you notice the webs of phase spiders and just walk around them. You manage to make your way all the way back to Yaka, having no encounters that are worth our time to play out. <laughs> um in Yaka, you will find the hustle and bustle of your little town has grown. The population has swelled by 50% since the first days of this campaign. Wow. Uh, the town is a mix of all sorts of people. You even spot a couple of forest gnomes hanging out on a tree near the front. Um, you know how the, the, the artwork for Yaka has all of those like spikes sticking out of the, the front of the castle? Yeah, in, the, in one of these little guys right here, where a giant monster skull is on. 
there's a couple of little uh, jungle brownies who are not jungle, uh, jungle gnomes who have made their home in the stake that holds up the creature and are happy to spout out any little bits of lore about creatures, uh, you know, the creature that's on the stake as people walk past. You'll find there's some dwarves hanging out in here now, just visiting, of course. They don't, they don't actually live here yet, but they've come through to see what all the hubbub is about and see, you know, you guys keep coming back with this treasure. You find gold, you find gems. They've got all these um, the these jade amulets that are these jade stones you're giving them. They want to know what's going on. The clerics here have been busy healing those that have come from far away that with illnesses that have no seeming cure. Halflings have shown up in this town. Not a lot, but a few of them have come on like a diplomatic mission just to see what's up and have decided to stay and help you guys farm your little temple here, your little ziggurat. The town is thriving as you were expecting it to. This is uh, another be- reason. To, I'm sorry. No, please. Uh, so this is another reason to take a lot of time because cool shit happens in the world like this. Um, can we tell them to start building a road to Ember's Keep? It's going to be kind of a fruitless effort because any road they build, first off, it's going to take fucking forever to do, and then the jungle grows so quickly that you would need to constantly maintain the road, and then you'd have to constantly like patrol the maintainers. It's like it's kind of a pipe dream. Can we? Talk to the gnome. Of course. I love having you talk to my gnomes. Are you kidding? <laughs> Cheerio. Ah, at all there. Uh, Hello. We haven't met this one, right? He's a new one. No, I'm new. Ah, oh. <laughs> uh, at uh, all. I'm Flintheart Brewsteel of the Brewsteel City. Uh, this is my, uh, these are my compatriots. This is uh, Bork. I think I don't remember her his name. Uh Zai and uh Fork Fork. Uh yeah, anyway. Uh that doesn't matter. Um nice to meet you. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you. My Ooh. name is Gobstopper <clears throat> Flumperdump. Nice to meet you. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's quite a name. Mm-hmm. We are the we are the uh, progenitors of this here city. The leaders, if you will. Oh, the, I thought you said the progenitors. I, I thought, wow, you, that's kind of crazy. You can't be that old. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, not, no offense. I mean, you're a dwarf. You could be kind of old, but to be the progenitors of Yaki, you'd have to be really old. Really old. That's actually not yeah, a word yeah, yeah. that I know. So I, I meant leaders. That's, that's what I meant. Ah, uh, yeah. yes. I have heard of you. You must be the mythical first rangers. Oh, is that our name? Yes, sounds good. First ranger sounds very good. Yeah, uh, sorry, I thought gnomes in this world were supposed to rhyme, Quibu. That is, that is a cultural thing of the gnomes in Arcadia. The jungle gnomes of uh, Arcadia East, Bravo, don't rhyme. It's mm. not a, a racial trait. It's a cultural trait. Okay. Uh, so, good master gnome, uh, we wouldn't want to take uh, too much of your time, but we were hoping that uh, you could look into a small issue with, uh, for us. You see... Um... What's that? A crack about my height? I'm just kidding with you. <laughs> I know you're small, too. Oh, uh, uh, yes. Uh, well, you see, uh, far off into the east of the island, uh, there lives uh, some cloud giants. Hmm. And uh, they have apparently built a castle in the sky. Now, uh, being such a, uh, a wide keeper of knowledge, as we know ye to be, um, perhaps you would be able to tell us how we might best trade with these folk and, uh, and uh, for some kind of alliance between them. Wow. Those are pretty big guys. Aye. What do you want from them? I look back at the party. What do we want from them? Hmm. Same thing we want from pretty much everyone. Hopefully they have something to offer. Um, But I'm sure they would make excellent defenders of the island. Um. And they are powerful wizards, some of them too. So we just want their cooperation. An alliance, if you will, a good master gnome. Well, I don't know what they're going to want out of an alliance with you guys. I mean, they sort of live in their own world above the clouds, as far as I understand. Uh, uh, what, what do you have to give them? We could not kill them. That would be great. I mean, I pretty appreciate living. <laughs> I think most people do, but you know, I, it would be really cool to kill a couple of cloud giants. I haven't done that yet. Looking That's forward to it. That's what we were it. hoping to learn from you. What do you think stone cloud giants really like? 
Well, I think they have everything that they like. I think they live probably the most perfect, peaceful life of anyone on this entire continent. You know, they just live in their clouds, do the cloud giant things, never have to worry about monsters, have, or aren't really threatened by anything, go about their lives doing whatever the hell they want to do. I kind of feel like cloud, I mean, I don't know. I've never met a cloud giant. I doubt we could even speak. They probably speak really slowly and I speak kind of quickly. I know even for you guys. So I doubt a cloud giant would really want anything at all. Then again, I am not a cloud giant. Maybe they have a craving for something they can't get. What, what can't cloud giants get? Hmm. I bet they're missing all sorts of good food. You know, that's probably true. I bet they just eat shit in the mountains or whatever's nearby. Yeah. Perhaps mm -hmm. we could arrange a relationship with Ember's Keep, which we now control, and have them trade with the giants from time to time. That sounds better well, than well, eating well. shit. I bet they have never had the glory of tea. That's probably true. I don't think tea grows above the clouds. You know, I think there's a tree line, which is very similar to the tea line, and tea won't grow above it, right? Right? Oh, oh, oh good one. Thank you. Good one. Thank you. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, yeah, that sounds great. But can you carry enough tea for a whole giant's cup worth? There's only one way to find out. Well, we can carry 500 pounds worth of tea. In this bag. Wow. Where'd you get 500 pounds of tea? Well, uh, maybe that should be our goal. We'll just uh, grab a bunch of tea and bring it over to the Giants. Ah, uh, that seems like quite a bit of work. Is there perhaps an easier way? It would take us many months to find that much tea. Would it not? I mean, so this is the main area of tea growing, right? Uh, here, the elves will also grow tea. Um, and it'll grow wildly in a few places. All right, how many uh, pounds of tea could I reasonably gather here? Well, as the first ranger, you could go and chat with the... What is her rank and title and name? Council the... Gardeners. Uh, Gord, the leader of the gardeners, would be able to give you that information. Um, but before you get there... The gnome will say, do, do any of you speak giant? Or can you can you speak giant? Because I, I don't think they speak your language. They do not? What, that seems very Probably strange not. for a highly intelligent creature. Well, why would they need to speak your language? Why would they ever bother learning it? Do they not talk to people on the earth below? The gnome shrugs. I wouldn't. If I was that big, I wouldn't worry about anyone else ever again. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe I'm just an asshole. It's possible. <clears throat> Can you speak giant? No. No. Well, I mean, sort of. I'm speaking giant right now, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> you laugh, but it's true. <laughs> um, is there anything you can tell us about their culture that uh, might be helpful to us? Can't we just use the crown? The crown? Oh. You have a crown? No. Oh, we can. Wait, use the crown on what? To, to speaking to understand and speak any language to them. We oh, give them the crown. Wait, can, wait. What? Can we speak their language, or they just understand the? Language? Okay, so that that crown, what it does is if we put it. Wait, Koibu, what does that crown we, do? We let us understand. When, and speak any when language. worn, allows the user to comprehend any language, speak any language, discern truth from lies, prevent paralysis, oh. stuns, slow spells, slow spells. Fuck. Fuck! I'm not ready to read my own shit! God! Why would we give, would we just give the crown to them? What if they're just like, fuck you and walk away with it? No, no, we, we, we wear, wear the, I wear the hat, oh. yeah. Yeah, we wear the crown and be like, oh, what's up? And then free action, crown of the emperor, yeah. We, we wear the hat and then we talk to them. So yes, we have a solution. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. <laughs> great! Well, you'll definitely need that then. Um, yeah, but if you could bring them something they want. If you have, I mean, I would just have a plan, you know, don't just show up and be like, yo, giants, what's going on? You know, because they're probably just going to think you're a pest. You're probably going to have like one shot to convince them of something. And otherwise they'll just be like, what are you doing in my house? You know how like when bugs get in your house, you just like squish them to get them out of your house. That's what you're going to be like when you visit giants. You're going to be the bugs in their house that are like probably there to like steal their food or whatever. And just uh, as a pest, they'll probably just toss you off a cloud. So uh, you'll, you'll probably get one shot. Make it a good one. One opportunity. Mm -hmm. and is this everything that... we ever wanted? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. 
I think our best opportunity will be to capture it. Will them the best cup of tea they have ever had. You're gonna base an entire relationship on a cup of tea? That's pretty ballsy. Yes. Wow. How good are you at making tea? Well, I've uh, made it for decades, so I would consider myself a tea connoisseur. I mean, okay, if you think so. Hmm. That sounds good. Well then, welcome home, fair travelers. Welcome back to Yaka. Thanks. Uh, th thank you kindly, and thank you for your help. We, lo we, we, uh, we welcome you in our city. Well, I'm happy to be here. And you guys can head on in. You can go speak with Gord and requisition all of the tea here. Uh, it seems that they have about probably like 20 pounds on hand, plus everything that's growing, which if they were to harvest it all right now, would be probably close to maybe 60 pounds that, are, that is growing in the town and around the town. Um, but it would take a couple of days to harvest. And then we have like a massive shortage of tea <laughs> in the entire town, right? Oh, it, no, uh, this is, yeah. it's a hard conversion. Do you know about how many pounds of tea one consumes in one tea drink? I know exactly how much this is because all I do is drink green tea every single day. How right. much so, green tea is in one cup of tea? Okay, so um, this right here is four ounces of green tea, okay? <laughs> and, um, and, tea uh, bags, Four ounces of loose. Well, we're talking loose leaf green tea, okay? Yeah, so yeah. four ounces of green tea. Well, if you drink it every single day, will actually last you about like three or four months. So is that uh, one cup a day, or is that like three cups a day? So you actually use the same. Um, you use the same cup of tea to brew multiple times. So you pour the loose leaf in. You can make like four cups of tea or five cups of tea with the same infusion. Oh wow! And then you just so it would be like one cup, one. One and that'll give you in the bag a day for thirty so days for three months. One one teaspoon of tea, about this much tea, will make you. I just I make this every day. I'm just have this ready chat like this. Like, <laughs> like, like okay, so like I have so it's like one teaspoon of tea like this. Put it in. We'll make four to five good cups of strong tea, and then out of four ounces, that'll last you about three and a half months. I would say so that then like a, a whole and there's sixteen ounces in a pound, right? So four times four, so that means like a pound of tea would last you like 1.5 years of daily drinking or a One little bit longer. One pound of tea makes 181 cups, according to greenhilltea.com, but I have no idea how accurate that is. That's probably not right because it would be, it would be about four a day per teaspoon, so I would say it lasts about 1.5 to two years. And okay. plus, tea doesn't go bad for a really long time, too. It takes like three or four years if it's stored dry. Sure. Okay. Like a pound is two years or something. But... Yeah. Okay. I might have wildly overestimated the amount of tea in the area, but we'll stick with it. Um, yeah. So you could harvest all the tea in the area. And what did we say? That would be a total of 80 pounds that you could bring with you. Uh, uh, we probably NFT. don't want to early harvest because we're going to need more for trading with okay. the giants if this works. Right. So we just want a good initial relationship. So, we'll so the, the 20 pounds I have on now? Yep. Perfect. Uh, and then we'd want a good giant drinking cup. Uh, so initial things that come to mind would be a braz a brazer? brazer. <laughs> a brazer, that is correct. Uh, any other ideas? I think brazers are best. Um, yeah, so these giants aren't that big, right? You said they're 30 feet tall? Something like that? That's like three humans. It exact that's not like that. That's not like crazy tall. That's six humans. What? Humans are not ten feet tall. <laughs> oh yeah, six humans. Six humans. I was like, yeah, that's not. That's not that many humans. I think it's pretty tall. It's it's a three-story building. Yeah. Holy shit. Also, <laughs> okay. oh, actually, it's more than a three-story building. Oh, also, it's okay. a matter of volume. Like it's a. Uh, I think a giant drinks more than six humans do. Well, I think mm -hmm. that's like a two-story building. I don't think. 10 feet is pretty short for a ceiling. 10 feet, 10 feet, 10 feet. 
uh, I think a if if you stack houses on top of each other, like a, if the roof will have a, like some extra room on top. So a, a one story building yeah. probably has an apex of a roof around twelve feet, but a two story building has an apex around twenty feet or something like that. Um, okay. Ish. I don't know. I would that, imagine between each floor, building. I would say it's got to be at least like twelve feet. But that made a good point. They probably already have their own cups. Oh, maybe. Well, yeah, but we need to serve them. I would say so. We should bring our own for right. a good gesture. How the fuck are we gonna bring a giant ass cup with us? We we just put a brazier in the bag of holding. You can't. It only has a certain width to it. You can't just shove a fucking brazier in there. That's true. Ah. It's only four feet wide at the widest you stretch it. Like, okay, so we're gonna pack that shit on the back of my moose. Do we That's have like answer. something we could make? Like a... We we put three foot and then you know we slide it in there. Pack like that shit on my moose. It's a moose, right? Oh yeah, we can do that too. Yeah, pack that shit on my moose. My or moose carries a giant cup. We could try to make some cup. sort of like IKEA cup that you like assemble yourself on the spot. That's technology. <laughs> I'm not sure they have IKEA in the year zero. <laughs> well, you know, somebody had to start IKEA. You know, <laughs> it would have been you from wherever you're from. Bork, bork, bork. bork. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure it's that. That sounds right. Hmm. Okay, so I guess. Where are we going to find a giant cup? Well, okay, if it's a brazier, it's everywhere. We just get one. Yep. We should probably pick one up in Ember's Keep because we don't want to carry that dumb shit all the way over from here. Yeah. Right? You could also have someone in town make something for you when you go to Riki and then just pick it up on your way back. Right? You have a, a whole town's worth of craftsmen at your disposal. Hmm. Yeah. It doesn't have to be something on hand already. Uh, you just idea. made it my number one priority to start IKEA now. Like some sort of establishment that's called IKEA. It's gonna happen. Wait, they had that back in the day. It's called like a furniture craftsman. Mm -hmm. A carpenter. Yeah. <gasps> or a, <laughs> a specific name for a chair maker that I can't think of right now. Okay, well, we requisitioned the blacksmith for a, uh, a cup for a 30 foot person. A chair blur. Is a craftsman in furniture. Really? Are you shitting me? <laughs> is it really? I'm not shitting you. <laughs> the pronunciation might be off, but a, ch a charbler? Charbler? That's amazing. Hmm. The fuck? I remember oh. reading. I'm not sure how correct it is, but there was like a student who was trying to. He wanted to like, yeah, uh, like I'm not shitting you, but like into an essay in the correct way. And like his teacher tried to help him, and like the most correct way would be to write, write one would not be considered shitted. Okay. All right. Um, so you put it in order for someone to make you a cup. Did you said you wanted that made out of metal? You said you went to a blacksmith. Wait, we don't oh. need it made out of metal. It can be made out of metal. Yeah, you're not gonna have a, a blacksmith yeah. in town. You'll have to have a dwarf for that. But you could make that a wood or stone or whatever else you can think of. Yeah, probably. Um... Gee, I guess stone. Mhm. Mm yeah, yeah, a nice stone uh, cup for a giant, please. All right, a giant size stone cup coming up. Hmm. If we can get some like cloud decorations on it, that'll make them feel like extra special. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> we'll requisition some artists too. Make a fucking cloud with a smiley face. Like, <laughs> and I think I remember that there were multiple giants, so we should get a nice pair. We'll, we'll get a two set, two piece set for him. A two piece set for the teacups. Yeah, that'll be our great gift to the giants. All right. Tea and cups. Uh, is it now time to go to Riki? Yeah. All right. Uh, Wait, we've so already rolled I should, um, for encounters. Should yeah. ask before we leave here, when, when all is said and done, how heavy will this be? 30 pounds. Each or for both? Each, yeah. For a big stone cup. Uh, would yeah. wood make, uh, would wood be lighter? Yes. We should make those out of wood then. Okay. Uh, oof. Uh, granite. 
So wood is the the wood that you'll be making this out of is half quarter, uh, like a sixth the weight. So thirty divided by six is five pounds. Okay, that's very funny. Perfect. Okay, done. Great. Okay, off to Riki. Uh, to which you guys will go, hop, skip, and jump your way to Riki. Why don't we take our last break right now? We'll come back and we'll do a short, short section of you guys talking with the people at Riki, getting whatever loot you want, and then heading back. And um, that'll round us out for the day. Let's do it. We're going on All a right. break. And there we go.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Empires of Arcadia. Hi. Our intrepid travelers will take themselves to Riki. Oh, side note, we drop off uh, 350 pounds of treasure in the town. Perfect. <clears throat> oh, are you As... notating that somewhere? Sorry. Uh, sure, oh. I'll write down that this yeah, is... Yeah, we're never going to remember that if you don't write it down somewhere. So. Yep, I'll write down town. Yeah, sorry, all right, I'm done. As you exit Yaka and begin on your way to the trail that leads to the river that you cross to then get, you know, yada, 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 there is a figure standing before the river. Uh, sort, of, sort of shorter than a human uh, with a long traveling cloak of sort of different colors of greens forming a strange pattern over it. The hood is down, long golden hair reveals a set of pointed ears. Before you stands someone that looks very similar to that last elf who you were talked to when the you went to visit the dwarves. Similar but not the same. Yeah, same guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, think, I like to take strange poetic license. Wait, but he's all the way over at Yaka now. Yeah, now he's waiting for you at Yaka. How the fuck did he get here? He probably walked just like we did. <laughs> what? He's a fucking. What do you mean he walked across the continent? As a yeah, well, how guy? did he get down there initially? Do you think he lived there his whole life? He probably walked down there too, right? No, that's one thing is like he walked across the entire continent alone. This guy must be like a fucking badass. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, probably we alone got is the probably info that the elves were basically 17th level, right? Something around there. Actually, while we're having this conversation, I would like you to tell me. I would like to know what level he is. Um... Oh! Wait, what did he do? Nice. So I have an ability called Know Your Enemy for the chat. Starting at 7th level, if you spend at least one minute observing Ooh. or interacting with another creature outside combat, you can Whoa. learn certain information about Holy its capabilities shit. compared to your own. The DM tells you if the creature is your equal, superior, or inferior in regard to two of the following characteristics of your choice. So I think the two I would choose would probably Whoa. be total class level, and then um, I guess current hit points. Okay, That's well, fucking wait, wait, awesome. Before, I mean, if you consult with me at all, this isn't going to tell you the number. He's just going to say, yeah, they're both higher. Well, he no, no, no. Me, he has he, to... no he, he, uh, so obviously it's his choice. I wouldn't expect him to say, oh, he's level 20 or whatever. But like, yeah. he should give me a rough estimate. Like, he seems to be okay. roughly your level. He seems to be significantly higher level or something like that would be my right. expectation. But I mean, it's a free ability. There's no reason not to use it. I don't know if you'd yeah, be able yeah. to tell if I'm. That's fucking awesome. That's so cool. That's cool. Good idea. Uh, Tazar, Tazar, Good idea to size up your enemy here. I mean, it's the same. I don't call him an enemy. Whoa. It's also, it's a seventh level fighter uh, skill. So it's like, this probably can tell you a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and what is your current total HP? 86. Ooh. 86. Oh. Imagine if he says he has lower HP, which is like, whoop. So he is significantly higher level than you mm -hmm. um, and has more HP, but you have a better HP to level ratio. That's pretty interesting. Okay. It's a wizard, Harry. Uh, and the elf appears to be patiently waiting as if he knows that you're going to be coming this way and he's just been standing here for a while until you show up. He seems very at peace with himself in this spot. Oh, <laughs> not this shit again. Ah, oh, we've traveled all the way across the continent and here's this fucking keeper back here again. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Master Blue Steel. No, 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 no. I Hello. am Grendel. You shut up. You remember me from last time? <laughs> Uh, yes. How can, how so can I forget? <laughs> I have hoped you've thought about that offer I made you last time we spoke. We yeah. have. And we I scan the surroundings and see if there are any other elves nearby. Make me a perception check. Oh, shit. Oh, crap. Did you say this is taking place in Yaka or outside? Outside of Yaka, outside of the walls, 22. kind of near the river. 22, wow, that's really good, actually. We should also put on the crown for this. Uh, 
I'm guessing five. Seems if, a little bit rude. Does anyone if, want to take the crown? If there's any, if there's any L's, I'm fucking calling the entire. I'll put army. on the crown. You said that the uh, the crown allows us to basically speak any language to understand someone. Yep. Okay. Yep. It does a shit ton of stuff. Comprehend any language, speak any language, discern truth from lies, which is why we'd want it, right? Prevent paralysis, stunning, and slow spells, and it's a crown of. It grants free yeah, okay. action. Why did I think we had to put that crown on the other person? Did we do that with the one? Because that was the crown of domination in Gnomes, Tomes, and Catacombs, so we're just mixing up the crowns. Okay, I thought we did that with the earlier guy we interrogated in this campaign. I don't know. But maybe, okay, gotcha. Uh, I can wear the crown if no one else wants to. I, don't I can wear it and say that I'm putting it on as my elf protection device, and he'll just think I'm weird. <laughs> Okay, it's up to uh, yeah. It's slightly to racist against elves. Yeah, I mean, if you request it, I'll I'll dig the crown out of my bag and hand it to you. Yeah, I say, right. um, Monk, can you give me yeah, my elf protection nearby. device? Wait, there what did no you say? Elves nearby? There are no, there are there no, are no other nearby. elves nearby. Okay, I reach into the bag, I pull out the crown, I hand it over to Thorbjorn. Okay, I put it on, and I'm like this, and I, I look a little crazed, like, No elves can read my mind now! <laughs> as um as he's putting that on, um, so as being a man of the forest and a ranger, and especially now knowing how much more powerful this person is than I originally um, understood, um, I, could I go ahead and take a look around to see if I see, like, anybody hiding in a tree in a spot where I might stand for an ambush? Can I argue yeah, why for... don't you also make me a perception check? Can I argue for advantage there, being a ranger archer man of my own? Mm, no, I don't think that gives you advantage on perception checks. I think okay. that you have skilled in perception checks then. Okay, gotcha. I just want to, I'll use my inspiration then, okay? Okay. For my perception here. Ugh, only 19. Okay. Yeah, there's definitely no other elves around. It's just gotcha. him. I was hoping you had reconsidered the offer. And we're willing to trade us the book. What do the you want books? with the books? Well, you see, uh, there are two reasons against. Uh, first of all is we have made a promise with another person to do so. Um, and as you know, we are people of our word and we like to keep those. Secondly, though, their offer is, uh, as I mentioned before, stronger than yours. I would be willing to increase our offer substantially. It has come to our attention that you magic arrows are a thing that you could use more of, and that is something I have on hand that I would be willing to trade. I say, I say to him before he continues, what do you want the tablets for? What do you want to do them? I would rather not share my reasons if it matters to you. But I assure you that it would not be of any negative consequence to you or your people. Is that true? That is true. Interesting. It would probably make it easier for us to decide if we actually knew what you were wanting to do with them. Would you give away something that other people are very like, wanting for without knowing? Knowledge is very important when making such decisions. So is trust. Exactly. And, and we have no trust reason. Trust me that we have no reason to have harm befall you in any way, shape, or form. Is that what he's saying, true? Mm hmm So, Master Elf. Um... Our interest here is in unifying the island, you see. The, ch the, chief, uh, the chief benefit of going with the wizards is that they have promised us an alliance. Something's th something the, the country of Solving has not done yet. So perhaps if there was uh, some kind of commitment on that level, this would be more of a conversation. My people will always be independent. We will never enter into any agreements that put anyone above us, give anyone power over us, or mm, put us in a position where we cannot control our own fate. Well, how about you collaborate with the wizards and you can both study them together? He gives you a, a gentle 
smile of, I'm not sure what, but sort of like a, hmm. Hey, here's a question. Are you guys more concerned with having these books? Or are you more worried keeping them out of the hands of those wizards? If we promise you that nothing ill will befall you or any people under your charge, does the answer to that really matter? Well, of course. We're not really worried about ill things falling before us. We're acquiring these books as favors for friends, We're trying to do a benefit to them. Removing that benefit might not be an ill to us, but it's still a negative nonetheless. So, are you more concerned with keeping these books out of the hands of these wizards, or do you actually need them for yourself? There is a third reason which I would prefer to keep um, to myself for the time being. Well, you know, as you can, I don't know if you're just terrible at negotiating, but you're not really <laughs> making any headway here. I'm not particularly I, smart, but. I would like to offer you magic arrows, magic weapons, armor, Magic Whatever arrows, magic weapons, need. magic armor, all of these items will just be in service collecting these books. You remove the books, you remove the incentive we have for these magical items. Certainly, you see the contradiction here, no? What would you like, then? <laughs> well, I believe my short dwarven friend here already spelled it out. Our goal is to unite the island and unite the tribes. You're clearly standing in opposition to that, which almost makes you an enemy of us. I don't know how you think trading us some items that we'd only use to acquire more of these books is supposed to make us give one of these books up to you. So there's nothing that we have that you would want in exchange for these Farron spell books. No, but, that, there that, is. That may it be. There, there is, and we've told well, you that. Please, you're just no, you've willing. not said what you would like. Tell me, uh, I what believe, is it that you see? It seems to me that you think that we are some simple adventurers, that we are uh, enchanted by these magical objects and shiny baubles. You see, we are going for something greater, Master Elf. We are trying to unite an island, defeat a monster that has been guarding it for a thousand years, and then expand and create a better world. Now, wouldn't she want to be a part of something like that? And that's coming from a dwarf. I lived in the ground all this time. You should be the ones with the big ideas and the expansion, what with your immortal lives and all of your time. Where the hell is this Elven bravery that I've heard so much about? Let me ask- There was nothing we could offer you that would sway you from your previous promises? Let me Rickets ask- Rickets and bobbles and- let me ask you this, Master Elf. Will you consider us an enemy if we do not help you? No, we will not. Is he lying? Which is also... No, he is not lying. That is true. That he has only like spoken the truth to you so far. Well, like the question it. is then, in our position, what would you do? You're offered a few shiny trinkets, a few shiny objects that we obviously have no use for in our current state in order for us to betray one of the most important allies we could forge on this island. What motivation have we to give these books up to you? You stand to gain wealth and power. Wealth have, and power? You need name your price, and I will consider it. The empire that we build across this island exceeds any offer that you can offer us. Surely you must understand that. Zaya enthusiastically nods at Korn's impassioned speech. The elf gives a deep and respectful bow and says, these are the words I was hoping to hear from you. You have earned your nymph for your halfling friends. Hello, we did it! Bork, bork! Wait, that was a test? Yes. Y the you whole thing? Been... Yes. Corn shrugs you been... disappointedly. <laughs> Could have offered us a little bit something better maybe to sweeten the deal. <laughs> it's one of the easiest, shittiest deals I've turned down in my entire life. You've been a bit of an enigma to us. Your ways are simultaneously honorable and barbaric by our standards, and we thought a more direct test of your morality is in due. Those that would seek to help their friends and not betray them for their own self-gratification or greed are the sorts of people with whom I believe our fey friends would like to work. I didn't even realize it was a test. That's hilarious. Ah, uh, well, wait a minute then. So was the was the part about uh, y'all not joining an alliance? Was that bullshit or is that part is that true? 
No, we have no wish to be under anyone else's thumb. We are happy to coexist alongside of you with the rivers and lakes separating our peoples and trade between each other uh, with prosperity. But, so, but, but that is what we want. We don't, we don't want you to be in, under our thumb. We, we just want to have open lines and open trade. And we want you to join a board of uh, leadership, a council, if you will, uh, of people who can uh, make decisions over the island. But my, uh, the monk friend knows more. Yeah, I would be happy to and, advise you. I turn back and I raise my hand. Uh, I believe that what you've laid out is exactly what we are looking for, cooperation and prosperity. Uh, and as our dwarf has mentioned, if you wish to send a member of your race to Yaka to serve as delegation, uh, we would be happy to have you. We will send someone who will stay here from time to time and head home from time to time. I shall report back to my people. I shall introduce you and your friends conceptually, at least to some of our Fey friends and leave the final choice in their hands, but I see no reason why they would not wish to help you. Um, Nymphs are good people, good-hearted individuals who wish for the wealth and health of all. I mean, not the material yeah. wealth, but spiritual wealth. Yes. Um, does it say at the bottom of my screen right now, achievement unlocked, nymph, achievement unlocked, elf? Um, Nymph will not be a playable race, and uh, I don't think Elf will be a playable race either. Um, I thought so Elf is already a playable race here. Half Elf is playable. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Are you sure? I thought that in the initial like thing, Elf was a playable race. I because my first character concept so. with you was an Elf. Yeah, but we kicked it to the curb. Yeah, cause, because I tried to do something really weird, though. No, all right, never mind. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Right. <clears throat> well, hey, you mentioned you do have magical arrows on you. Are you still interested in uh, <laughs> trading for those? Um, do you have something? Uh, there well, are a way of getting to and from home, typically. I can tell you one hell of a story, because I know how much you elves value that. Um, corn produces one magic, or not one magical, but one, um, in, like, very nice elven necklace. Uh, the jade and jewel encrusted, jade encrusted, I don't remember what mm -hmm. gem or whatever, but... Yeah. Emerald. Emerald, gotcha. Yes! Uh, his eyes visibly glitter before him as you produce it. Mm -hmm. And he will take a few steps hesitantly and reach out slowly, enough that it's like he's asking permission. Um, sure, I reach out my arm to... and I drop it in his hand if he reaches his hand out. Yeah, he will look at it gently um, and then say, yes, I would trade you for this. How many magical uh, And he makes a, a wave to a tree um, from which two more elves. Uh, of course Son of a bitch, do. that's so fucking crazy, dude. What are these guys rolling? Are these like... Well, I you have to keep in mind that if he's significantly higher level than me, this is like a level 13 plus elf, right? And Koibu took like 10 minutes earlier checking, so he was obviously rolling the godly stealth check, so yeah. Dude, that's so awesome. This is like Shadowrun. These guys are like special forces, like, that's sick. They like uncloak, basically. They're like, and then they're like, yeah. I mean, are they literally uh, invisible? It looks like they're actually physically stepping out of a solid tree trunk as if they were inside of it and like walking out of the that's tree. That's so badass. Holy shit. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and two of them will hustle over uh, and just sort of whisper to the first elf, because I have no idea what's being said. Um, and then one of them will sling wait, off wait, the wait, wait, no, 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 no. I have an idea of what's being said. <laughs> I'm wearing the crown. Yeah, he whispers. Oh. Is the, that's why it's not, an el it's not the elvish. It's the, oh, okay. the, the, the loudness. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. Um, where was I? Right, um, and open up his bag and start to rummage through it. And you have, you're offering him these necklaces in exchange for uh, arrows, right? I showed him one necklace. Right. So he will, um, he's gonna roll some dice and decide how many arrows he thinks that's worth. Destiny never split the diff difference, Bonnell, dude. Uh, he will offer you six 
arrows. What type of arrow, though, is the question. Yeah, I do want a magical weapon. <laughs> Our last fight sucked. Also, as you get higher level, like most things will probably be magic. Yeah, I can go more levels into Barb now. Well, I'll do, I don't know. I guess third level fighter is pretty good. Is that where you're getting all your like precision dies and stuff? Me? Um, third level, and then I think seventh, I got one more. Oh. Yeah, my yeah, three. If you went to two, you definitely want three levels of it. Yeah. I'll do one more level in fighter and then go back to Barb. We do Rogue or something next. Get sneak attack. <laughs> So is that it? Six arrows? Uh, yeah, I just I'm trying to figure out which arrow oh. type though, because they they come in varieties. Do their bows seem to be extra special, or do they have like archer bracers or anything? They are wearing leather armor. They do have bracers on, but you can't tell. Like they're of high craftsmanship, but you can't tell if they're magical or not. Um, their bow looks very similar to your elven bow, actually. Very very similar. Mm -hmm. Oh, Devin, are you gonna have detect magic? I, I did. I guess I should tra I should train it. The, the the problem is like it's so big of a deal to use a paladin spell slot. It's like a big fat deal. Yeah. Yeah. I I but I guess I should use it because there's other shit that I don't use. So, how yeah, many let me... spell slots do you have? I have or four. Spell slot, but how many yeah. spells can you have? Um, that's a good. <gasps> I actually have more spells because I got my charisma up, so I can use I can memorize more spells. Isn't that right, Clebo? <laughs> memorize one additional spell per level. <laughs> Okay, so so yes, I can um, use detect magic. Yeah, one that's additional good. per level. Wait, so did you no, just gain like one seven... additional spell? You can. One okay. additional it's spell. one Sorry. spell. Yeah. So yes, I do have detect magic, um, but I have to be very sparing with it as it's a very big deal. Maybe for these you. elves should tell us what kind of amethyst they are. What if they're magical? What if we're giving away plus thirty hit points? Perhaps you should be asking these questions. Oh yeah, we should have probably asked the wizards before we give these amulets away. Oh, Dude, yeah. these elves are just fucking us. Every, no, no, like, no, no, no. They haven't lied so, to us. They're actually pretty are, good. Yeah. These are also, this is like a little bit retcon y, but like, I, I'm pretty sure, like, it being elven, me having elven arrows and an elven bow, that I would have tried one of these on and maybe shot a few arrows to see if I felt like they flew any truer or if I felt I had a knack. The only reason I didn't was because I think I explicitly heard you say when we picked them out of the dungeon, you're like, oh, these don't appear to be magical. Although you could have just said they don't appear to be, but. But I guess we could just ask him now since this is wearing the crown anyway. Yeah. Yeah, this is wearing the crown, so you'll know if he's lying. Yeah. And they, they, they generally seem good. They don't seem to yeah. lie to us. What are these amulets exactly, if you don't mind me asking? These are gifts given to You know, I can't remember the human's name. We always just referred to him as the, the king in the east. Uh, long before the mountains came and the, the storms came and the mountains rose, there was a great human empire in the far east, uh, which with which we elves had a functioning and a hospitable relationship. We made gifts to them of our, of many things. Um, these necklaces were some of our finer works of craftsmanship. Um, worn by the royal elven household and given to them as a sign of good faith and goodwill. So they're pretty. They don't do much, I'm guessing, huh? Their significance to us is purely symbolic. I understand. How about the significance of those bracers that you're wearing? Are those symbolic or do those actually give you a, <clears throat> some assistance in firing your arrows? He gives you a wide grin instead of speaking. How many types of magical arrows are there, Koivu? Ask him if that's something he would be willing to trade, the bracers. Yeah, I'm, I'm just finding out. He's just looking for the arrows. That's not fun. That's not fun. Some of them are, like, really specific. Like, versus lycanthropes or arrows of law. They always hit and kill chaotic creatures at normal bow ranges. Like, ridiculous stuff. 
Um, uh, yeah, that's not good. Well, actually, instead of having to look this up then, um, because upon eyeing those bracers, uh, Korn produces three more um, necklaces from his cloak. I don't suppose you'd be willing to part with any of those bracers, would you? Uh, the bracers? Four of these necklaces. These are very valuable. These were last seen when the storms rose and the mountains rained. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me check and make sure that I know what I'm offering you here. Okay. I think braces of archery give you plus two to hit with bows. No damage. Oh, bonus. that's where the, your destiny misses a lot. Yeah. Plus two to hit is really good. That's insane. Oh my gosh, it is. Uh, bracers of archery. You proficiency with bows. You gain plus two damage. Uh, boat damage to attack rolls. No, no. no. A plus two bonus to damage rolls on attacks made with bows. So plus two damage, not plus two to hit. That's what the bracers uh, do? Yeah. Yeah, that's really sick. Four yep. necklaces. Yes, he will trade you a set of bracers of archery for the four um, leaf pendant bra necklaces. Awesome. You said, you said plus two AC as well? No, no, no. It's just two to damage. Are you sure? <laughs> uh, Final yeah. answer? Yeah. Um, what's the weight on these? Is it negative? How or? often do you get people with those sneaky questions? Because you <laughs> you lay those on all the time. He's good at it, dude. If, if you just suggest things, most people agree with it. You never know. <laughs> You're a good yeah. one though, Quavo. You sure do. <laughs> how, how much do these weigh? How many pounds? Oh, uh, they're negligible. Negligible. Got it. Yeah. Did mm. they have anything else? They did talk about magic weapons. They have some arrows um, that will give people. Um, it's a disadvantage in all saving throws against spell effects uh, when hit with it for one round or for um, one minute. You know, Master Elf, I do have a question for thee. Mm hmm. Long in this car, uh, long in the campaign of uniting the island, I have thought. Ah, uh, as, a, as a follower of, of the great craftsman Sayer, have you know of any particular items that may bring me closer to my god and maybe bring me closer to uh, of, or any holy symbols or things lost? For there's been quite some time on these islands that I have found anything of interest. He will walk towards you, uh, lean down, and whisper something in your ear, which I will just PM you. Fuck yeah. Okay. It's probably like you're short. Now that we tricked them out of getting the nymph, we need to enslave her and bring her to Yaka and force <laughs> her to farm for us. <laughs> oh, right. shit. Okay. Uh, and he'll take a few steps back. I do believe we will meet again. It was nice Unless meeting you, something... you, Master Elf. It was nice to meet you again, Bork Bork. Why is that my name now? <laughs> I am Master Elf, and I thank you for the contribution as well. It shall not be forgotten by myself or the dwarves. Yes, we I shall take our vote then. For our long standing cooperation. And by the way, would you be uh, needing this back? I kind of fingered the necklace around my neck. We would take it if you no longer wish for us to see your movements and hear your words. I, you know what? I think it might be a good idea to keep it. I agree. Maybe they'll Cause... rescue us. Dude, how badass would it be to get like special forces elves to drop out of the trees or some shit and yeah. fucking wreck something? <laughs> yeah, that'd be fucking awesome. Well, if you will, if you will allow me to keep it, I believe that this will be an excellent uh, way to communicate. So I will hold on to you. Do you have um any, I don't really know the exact details. Do you have a certain time that you scry in so that I could send you a message then? 
like three knocks on the amulet or something and we say hi? SOS. <laughs> oh, it is a matter of convenience for us. Um, as our time and spells permit. Um, so unfortunately, no, no discernible time. Do you have a way of making like them in a glow or something? If we say like, hey, you know, we're about to die, bonk, bonk. Do you have a way of like saying, yeah, okay, we're, we'll try to help or something? Unfortunately, it does not that work that way. It is simply a beacon to which we can attune our scrying spells. Could you, could your best ranger shoot an arrow so far that it hits our enemy from wherever we are from solving? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. Would that you, is worth a shot. Would you be willing to do this at the end of each month uh, during the sunset? Uh, commit to a scrying at that time so that we may send you messages if need be. Sunset on the last day of the month? Yes. Uh, every yes. month. We can do that. Pong! Five head! <laughs> well then, uh, I accept this gift with gratitude. How do you not fall over? <laughs> Good day, travelers. And he will leave, taking his two people that came out of the trees, plus the fourth one that never showed up, that stayed hidden, and uh, they will head north. How do they you leave? guys head south, uh, walking on foot. Awesome. Uh, in a very plebeian let's get way. To the wizards. Interesting. So I'll nudge the I'll nudge the eye and say, make sure you remind me so. They don't catch me when I'm taking a shit that day. I don't forget. <laughs> um, also, Clover, right. could you just say it once more? Say what? The thing. Did you say the thing again? <laughs> Storms came and the mountains rose? Thank you. That's his... <laughs> that's his... That's his thing. <laughs> uh, dude, I wonder if people have drinking games while playing this. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a game? What is happening? It's fine. Um, all right, you guys get to Riki. You can make your way in. The the pitiful warriors that guard the front gate, mostly ceremonial, mostly to keep out the small creatures that might show up here. Uh, yes, Devin? Can I talk to the party before we get there? Yes. Um, aye, right, lads. I think we might want to... Uh make a very important point of getting some underwater believing arguments. Two more from these folk. The elf gave me on good word that powerful magics lay beyond below Acropolis. And that if we go there, we may find something to our liking. Yeah, that sounds good. I'm okay with did that. We trade, we have two, did we trade one book for one amulet before, or was it part of another trade? I think it was one on one. But was it really? I also think that there's only there's only four more left right now. We're almost done, so it should be the the reward should also be increasing. What's the the curved good line? <laughs> Exponential, but exponentially. Um, do, we, do we have only one book or one amulet right now, or two? I forget. We have, we have two. Two. We have two. Yeah. Okay. So getting well, two more basically means we can go underwater, but and that we can go to Acropolis, which I think we want to go to. Do we? I, we I do. think so too. Yeah. Is there a book in Acropolis or do we just want to go there? There's some really cool shit. Okay. All right, that's what I wanted to tell them. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I'm, I bet they would be happy to trade two for two. Prioritize the amulets. Well, maybe we'll try so to wait, get more. I try can to just get more keep from this them. crown on me, right? There's no reason not to. Correct. You, you can't fight with it. Why not? Because it it's a fall hat. off. Yeah, it's not yeah. like a. It's not like meant. It's not gonna hold on to you very well. If you have to make uh, a, a quick duck, it could easily just like tumble to the ground. Right. Can I get like? Do the wizards have glue? I mean, yeah, they have glue, but I don't think you want to glue it to your head. I think that creates more problems than it solves. All right. <laughs> I'll I'll write it in my inventory instead then and put it on. How much does it okay. weigh? A pound. Okay. Wait. Why wouldn't you glue it to your head? 
I really want to. Well, first off, the glue is not going to hold forever. It's going to come off at some point and you're not going to know when that point is and then you're still going to lose it. Secondly, it's going to be glued to your head and it's going to be super fucking awkward to sleep. And then it gets stuck to your hair and then your hair is all glued together. So you're going to be constantly pulling and tugging on your hair. So it's going to be painful. But um, there are going to be times I... you're going to want to take it off. Like if you want to bathe or something and then it, now it's stuck to your head. And it's right. Just okay. But realistically, on a serious note, I could very easily get like some like leather attached to it so that the leather is holding it onto my head like a normal helmet. Make like a chin strap yeah the, the crown yeah uh i suppose if you have time and resources which you do you think... could devise a way by which to strap it to your head um it just Koibu's... seems silly to m do that i think what koi gonna do is be like <laughs> an orc hits you in the head the shatters the crown like he hits your he hits the crown it shatters the crown it explodes like it's like that kind of thing like like He'll find some way to fuck you over by doing yeah, this. Yeah, it's quite yeah. You're right. Yeah, he'll, he'll. Yeah, it's gonna be a problem to wear something that is not designed to be worn on your head all the time. All right, you all right, know? All right. Sounds good. Did kings wear their crowns all the time? Probably not. No, only during you know the ceremonies when they're. Yeah, when they yeah. need to be identified as a king in a public Let's situation. Let's do some negotiation with Wizard One and Wizard Two. Wizard One and Wizard Two. We need to get more out of them than just two amulets. That's mm -hmm. ridiculous. Why more? Yeah. Okay. Well, here you are in Riki. The guards let you in. You are greeted by the people here. Um, they're eager to see you because they know you've been out to gather the amulets. And as you come in with bated breath, they watch. And their leader steps forward, Finn, the old man, and says, Did you bring back all six of them? Do you have them all? It was a massive fight. We were up against almost immortal enemies that only magic could damage. Which was a big problem because I don't have anything magic. Which is really shitty. So maybe you can help with that. But we were only able to get back to. We almost died. There was also a basilisk that almost turned it into permanent stone. And there are loads. And I mean loads of people there that have been turned into stone. So maybe we should like help free them, because you know, being a rock. That I don't know how about you, but I, do you think there's any nice things about being a rock? I don't know. So you know, maybe un unrocking people would be nice. So you got two. <laughs> uh, yes, hey, last I checked, that was two more than you lazy fucks were able to go out and get. So I don't understand what the critical the critical eye is for. I, uh, master wizard, uh. Perhaps you could give us a little bit more insight into what you want these books for. They contain great sums of knowledge, spells that have been beyond our reach for ages. Uh, they are the Farin spell books of the great spell, the great sorcerer Ferris. I, I'll be wearing have the you, crown for this entire thing, by the way. Have you any? Uh, have you any interest in uh, what particular thing are you going to do with these books? So, do you have any particular goal? I don't know what to do with them because I don't know what they contain. Is this well, true? What lost what, secrets is, and knowledge. Is this true? Yeah, yeah. What what have the books done for you so far? I understand that a dwarf might think in terms of get thing, thing provides obvious concrete benefit right away, but magical research does not work that way. It will take time, and not all of the benefits of this research, this knowledge, will be obvious at first. It may take a generation before the true power, the true usefulness of these things are unlocked, or perhaps it'll just be academic in, in form. Okay, Listen. But, but Master Wizard, it's just each fight and everything, the more closer we get to the rest of the tablets, is just becoming so dangerous. Um, so we just wanted to let you know that we might not be able to guess the rest of the tablets because, you know, the, the rewards, they just haven't really been enough so far. Like, we're risking our lives here. Several of um, my friend Sai's here, party members are already dead in the, um, the, the quest for these tablets. And the last one almost uh, uh, took us out as well. So, you know, with, with the rewards being what they are, I, I don't really feel comfortable pursuing more of them. I see. Well, let us work on the ones that we have before us right now. 
and worry about the other ones afterwards. Yes? Yes, uh, I was biting his tongue here, letting Thorgorn run his mouth, uh, but he'll go with it. I pull out the tablets. Uh, here are the two tablets. What can you offer us for these? We have amulets of water breathing, which we have offered you before, time and again, and you have routinely uh, rejected. Let's see. There are potions of our various kinds, but we are running near to the exhaustion of our magical items that we have for trade. You have uh, taken most of the good stuff already, one would say. So I have oh, a question. We also brought you some of the reagents you were looking for. Oh, true. Um, Splendid. I bought that three spider sacks. Oh, we have some like mad shit from that. I have a dragon eye. Yeah, we got a dragon eye and we got a basilisk. basilisk uh, basilisk dog or something? Like what do we have? Like what, what's the basilisk thing we have? A basilisk eye, a dragon eye, and three spiders. Oh, we have basilisk eye, dragon eye, and what? Yeah, three okay. Three spider sacks. Um, Master Wizards, would it be able for you to enchant my axe to make it so that we could do damage, magical, or sorry, physical immune enemies? Unfortunately not. That power still eludes us and is well beyond our capabilities. Enchantments require, of that type, require a a 16th level wizard at least. Well, okay. hey, wait, what level is this guy? I wanna, I'm gonna get to my <laughs> level out of this one. <laughs> Did HBA you just use level. that at will? Yeah. That's fucking awesome. What about some sort of potion or something I can enchant my weapon HP with temporarily? Level. You want a s HP and level for this wizard? Yeah, my, that, that seems to be the most important thing here. Your level what? Nine. Nine? Uh, he is equal level and less hit points than you. Do people age? Uh, Why well, can I wait? Can I ask this guy? <clears throat> do people age while petrified? Not that I'm aware of. Seems to me there'd be a great deal of knowledge potentially in that cave. If you were to unpetrify some of those frozen people, you may be able to pull people out from hundreds of years ago that you could have a chat with, no? Certainly. Perhaps thousands of years ago. Before the storms came and the mountains rose? I suppose. Nobody really knows. <laughs> Just starts rapping. Oh, there's a wizard there that's frozen. A powerful one. Oh yeah, because we did we see that he had a spell book. I he think? had a spell pouch and, and he, a book, yeah. and he was holding a spell book mm -hmm. uh, and a Baba Yaga's hut. That book on its own might be fairly valuable, I would imagine. No. I master wizard. Perhaps you have some kind of potion that can uh, unpetrify someone, because there was a wizard of some power that was left there. We go back and find him for the. He has a spell book of his own. And perhaps some stories to tell. He'd probably move in. Hmm. Uh... Flesh to stone is a level beyond his ability to cast. But there's other wizards, right? No, this guy is the the leader of these people and the highest level wizard here. What? How about we like? Dumb Dumbledore is fucking Destiny's level. What the fuck? This guy shouldn't this guy be like super tough? But we tough? could like power level him. He's <laughs> a ninth level wizard. He is super fucking tough. What a shitter! Holy shit! We should be offering <laughs> power leveling services. To yeah, we here. could take them around the island. Let mm. them like make sure that they hit the target once. Elo boosting. Yeah. <laughs> And then we can like kite as well from multiple squares, like like one trolleru, like take them close together, and then AOE farm everything. Do they have any um, flesh to stone potions? 
No, they can't even cast a spell, so they they can't make the potion if they can't cast a spell. Should have asked the fucking elf. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Hmm. Is that the only way? The only, the only way that he knows. The deep petrify. Yeah, flesh to stone would be the reversible the the spell that we would reverse. Uh, however, that is currently beyond any of our abilities. Would a restoration spell work? Greater? That is clerical magic, not arcane. We have no access to such things. It's something you can research, maybe. Given time, which I will translate into game mechanics, when he gets to 11th level, he'll be able, 12th level, he'll be able to get, cast the 6th level spell. So, given time and research, he'll Is he gain 3 levels. Yeah, he'll level, but it'll take him like 5 years, you know. Because he's doing it the safe way. Hmm. I mean, um, I don't have greater restoration, but uh, yeah, you guys are sort of um hitting max power level here for NPCs. Uh, you are as strong as the well, as strong. You're of equal level to the leader of the Wizards of Riki. You are the strongest people in Yaka. Uh, it stands to reason that you're the strongest people in Ayu or Outlast, uh, not Outlast, Bastion, any of these places. Uh, perhaps some of the dwarves and some of the elves who have been around on this world much, much longer than you will be of higher level than you. But of the humanoid characters, you guys are going to be some of, if not the most powerful people on the continent, minus Wait, elves and dwarves. Do we have dwarven clerics? Yes. Oh. We do. So where, what about, we could just have, oh, gee, so Flint's just like, oh, uh, I, it must have uh, evaded me. I can't believe it, but uh, my people have quite prominent clerks serving under our king, of course. We could ask them. That's a good idea. Cool. Not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, in the meantime, we're doing this trade, right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. two books. Uh, it seems like Two amulets of water breathing would be a good start. Is there anything you can add on that? We can offer you potions. Um, let's see if they have any spells that they could cast on your behalf that you might like. Let's see. Ah, you had a magic boat, right? Uh, throw that in, we have a deal. What are we going to use a boat for? I have no idea, but... <laughs> well, let's see what the potions are. Please. The potions could potentially be useful. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's something we can offer you. Uh, one of the things that has been unlocked in the Farron spell books is a is text about a teleportation circle. Fast travel! It is not entirely known to us how this works, and it may require a wizard on hand. It is still a new area of our experimentation and research, but we could build for you in each of our our soon-to-be cities uh, such a place to allow easy transportation of goods and people. That sounds amazing. And how about now that we're so close, we already begin the preparations for you finally joining the Alliance. And then we will definitely go risk our lives for the last ones. That seems fair. That seems fair to us as well. Poggers! I mean, work. Let's, uh, uh, then we have a deal. We do have the a deal. deal. Is two amulets, one boat, and this. I don't think the boat was mentioned. But oh. if they want to throw it in the boat, that's cool. I don't want the fucking boat anyway. Fuck that Wait, boat. Wait, Mm-hmm. 
Can you say what it says at the bottom of my stream? Achievement unlocked. The storm's rays came in the mountains rose? No, achievement unlocked wizard. Oh. We, need, we need to get them all the books, right? We already yeah. have the witch quest. No, they just said they were, uh, they're would they joining the alliance. That they will begin the uh, the advanced preparations with the assumption that it's all going to work out. They will start the preparations for then. But they are have they will wait until, like, the, the ink right, will not right. be dry on the paper until all the books are here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Great. Teleportation circles for all the towns. That's Wait, so sick. they're going to start building them? Yes. That is so fucking That's awesome. So there's going to... Yeah. How I'll, do you use I'll them? Like... The wizards. Am I right in assuming in order to build such a circle, you have to be in the town itself? Yes. Okay. And I trust that you will be able to get to all the towns safely enough with your powerful magics. I can make my way there in the blink of an eye. My companions will have to uh, take the old-fashioned route. That's awesome. kind of badass. Did you just say you can literally teleport to one of these towns? I can myself, yes. You it is not do. without risk or danger. Uh, um, I have do. been to Yaka before, so I am familiar with the area well enough to try it. But some would there they would say there's a... 10% chance of physical harm to myself and a 2% chance of outright death. Pretty high. Holy shit. Whoa. That's a lot of risk. I would not keep rolling at 2%. <laughs> yeah. You I will seen... go there once and then make the circle so it is safe to travel without. <laughs> oh my god, can we roll as teleport? <laughs> that would actually be really funny. Please no, do that. No, that would be so shit that'd if we so... have these teleportation can, circles can, and he rolls at one and then can we destiny fucking roll get him. it? Because I feel like uh, destiny I, fucks up the I'm, most important rolls. I have an alternate plan. You are too valuable for us to risk the winds of chain, uh, chance here. Would you like to come with us to Yaka right now? But Trump, that would take an extra 5.7 days, which would let him in our campaign by a large amount. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're literally going there anyway. Yeah, uh, I will that. travel with you. <laughs> yeah, that seems nice. to be a safer route. Fuck yeah, we get a ninth level wizard in our party, dude. That'd be fucking nice. All the encounters in between. Dude, let's bring this guy to the sideways dungeon. Oh, that'd be sick. Do you think they would do that? No. We can't like. Usually in D and D, you can't like. Wait, can he buff have... me? Um, they, he, one of the things that he's willing to offer in exchange is spells to be cast upon you. Yeah. Um, if you need a spell cast upon you. So if you want, uh, maybe the next time you grab a book, you come back and they'll trade some spells or something. Oh. Do they have any healing potions? Unfortunately, they do not. They deal in arcane, not divine. Um, but I think this is where we will end our session for today. We're mm -hmm. a little bit late anyway. Sorry about that. 9.30 is um, okay. Yeah, sorry. All right. So uh, you have traded teleportation circles to be built in all your towns. That's so cool. And um, that's that. You've given them the two books. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Take them off your character sheet. And uh, there are four remaining places to go. Uh, there is the... Um, insect nest, the mutant insect nest. There is the crystal cavern, and then there is the storm giants up top. Uh, you can tackle these in any order, but I think it's probably more climactic to end with the storm giants. But you know, do whatever you guys want to do. Also, we got to go to. Our, uh, there's also Acropolis now because we got the four. Wait, animals. I figured the uh, the de deep spawn would be the most climactic thing to end on. Oh, no, I mean, no, he's those... just. Of the books, he's just oh. saying the book quest. Yeah, we got we yeah, got yeah, tons of, of shit. To, we got tons of shit to do. We gotta go to Acropolis. Gotta go to the dungeon. We gotta go to the like all kinds of stuff. Yeah, but like we have a, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. He's saying of the book quest, we should end on the storm. I agree. We'll do that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Awesome. Great. All right, Devin Nash. Where can we find more of Devin Nash? Hi, you can find more of Devin Nash at twitch.tv slash Devin Nash and youtube.com oh. slash Devin Nash. All and twitter.com slash Devin Nash consistent branding for uh i am a marketing industry guy it's normally what i talk about um i would love for you to come by thank you very much for watching our campaign um i hope you guys enjoyed it awesome trump hello at trump sc watch me do strategy type games uh destiny 
Uh, Twitch.tv slash Chesney. I do a lot of random shit. <laughs> and Koibu. You'll find me on Twitch.tv slash Destiny tomorrow for Tombs of Scoria, episode two. Oh. And uh, my name is Zizrin, and I am now instantly going to be playing Path of Exile. And we'll see you back next week on Destiny's channel. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. Yeah. Unless Trump is doing his taxes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> shit. Do them earlier. It might, right. might be what might be postponed next week. But we'll see. Well, he said small it's chance. almost certainly happening. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, sweet. Awesome. Okay. Bye. Well, thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.